one for today's hits. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Combat Deviants with a very exciting packed show for everybody with a couple of guests. And we actually got our third uh, host joining us with Carrie. Carrie, we just started the show. I mean, what? I didn't know if it was 9 or not 30. I'm like, Steve's like, I'm in the back. I'm like, I'm coming. I'm <laughs> coming. Oh, man, I'm so happy that all of us are here. So listen, guys, we have an exciting show packed up for everybody. Obviously, with two guests lined up on today's show, which we'll get to in just a second, Steve will be sharing what our guests are. But UFC 279 going down, it couldn't have happened any better. Carrie, I can't wait to hear what you have to say about it. BKFC going down, Invicta FC guests coming up as well. And Tweets of the Week, a new segment that we got this week for everybody. And, man, if you guys want to engage last week's episode, oh, my God. I mean, we got pickup lines from last week. I was going out there to Starbucks trying them. You know, I, I was doing the Forrest Gump approach, with which, Carrie, we're going to ask you about in a second. <laughs> and uh, I got some surprises <laughs> for okay. this intro. But before we start anything, guys, make sure to follow us on Twitter at Combat Deviants. Also subscribe down below. The show is powered by BellyUpSports.com, where you can find all the latest sports news. And I got a little announcement, guys. Your gonzo journalist, Evil Eddie over here, is going to be going hard in the paint. Carrie, what are we just showing for the people who can't see on the audio show? Oh, I didn't mean it. I have a lighter in my hand. <laughs> what do you mean? What, 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 the, the roof is on fire then. I mean, so Carrie, listen, let me, let me ask you something to start the show off to see if last week's show would work. If a guy came up to you, not a good looking guy like me, but a, a guy came up to you and said, oh, all right. Say for instance, I came up to you. All right. A little, okay. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a what? A five out of 10, you would say? No, you're way better than that. I'm, oh, you're being too nice. So I if I came up to you, you had no idea who I was, which actually happened at one point. And we'll get to that in a second. Uh, and I said, hey, my name's Evil Eddie. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Is that a good way to approach a girl or no? What, what's the best way to approach a woman? Okay, so would you say it in that way? Because that's... <laughs> <laughs> he, he's saying it that way because that's how Blaine said it. Last week. <laughs> it's the Forrest not, Gump approach. It's not in that Gump way, approach. but you know what's really funny? And I'm like really glad that somebody has brought this up besides myself. People don't know how to talk to people anymore or oh. approach people anymore. And I think that like the whole lockdown and everything and people not being in contact with people for so long... People oh, got really like freaked out. Like I've had guys like look, like stare at me. I'm like, say hi. Like I'm a nice they, they just stare I, at you, yo. Uh, all the time. I'd rather somebody just come up and say hi. Just come up and like tell me to go fuck myself. Just don't stare at me. Oh man. Oh. So Carrie, actually, you met me in person. Yes, but I have. You were the engager, which uh, you know a lot of guys are not used to, which made things a lot easier. And I think you literally came up to me and said, "Hello, my name's Carrie." What's yours? And it works. <laughs> it actually, you I heard that, Steve. Do that. I really do. I rather because I, I can gauge when I when I want to talk to somebody or when somebody wants to, you know, talk to you. You 
listen, everybody knows like body language, general chemistry in that if you uh, get like an eye contact with somebody, especially Blake builder, you, I mean, you know on. what I mean? So yeah. I usually just cut the corner and I'm like, Hey, what's up? My name is Carrie Steller. How are you? So <laughs> listen, so listen, Carrie, well, what so if it was know. this? And Steve, I want you to look at the screen really quick. What if you had no idea what was happening? And I said, hello, my name's Evil Eddie, and we're about to fight in a phone booth, which was a huge thing this week on social media. I'm throwing yeah, this out here as the shock of the week. Fight in a phone booth. Did you guys see this? Have you guys seen this? <laughs> so th this has been a huge thing going on on social media. This is a real thing. Over, over, overseas combat sports. They, they, they always deliver. Oh, that's great. Not the podcast phone booth fighting, but actual phone booth fighting. They want a smaller octagon for more action. Well, you got a phone booth. This yeah. is just ridiculous. I mean, I've heard of slap boxing before, but this is this is crazy. I mean, wh where are we going with this one? But Steve, we got an exciting show lined up for everybody. We want to know what you guys think. You can comment and it will appear on the show. You can become a weekly member of Combat Deviants. But Steve, who do we have joining us? on this episode, episode uh, we got, i mean obviously you know we're gonna we're gonna do some uh some some 279 post-mortem you know uh we got we got bkfc heavyweight Bo bobo o'bannon's gonna be joining us and he's gonna be t taking on welcoming to bkfc that the 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 ufc vet veteran there mr mr big ben rothwell's gonna, gonna be making his and his first foray in in, in bkfc bobo's gonna go gonna, go gonna, choke gonna meet him that's gonna be be an interesting fight on october 1st uh i'm really looking forward to that main event too you got you got you got uh you got hero and hunt too that, that, that's gonna be a fun one but you know you know bobo is definitely gonna be looking to looking to make a statement where yeah. has ben rothwell been because you know he was going in i remember some of my favorite years steve were the go-go -go choke years you guys remember the go-go -go choke years he was going in there he, he was beating everybody mm -hmm. walking out to phantom of the opera one of my one of my absolute <laughs> favorites what, what what's some of your favorite memories of ben rothwell because the people out yeah. there that aren't familiar with Big I mean, ben. some of his post fight, some of his post fight celebrations are just yeah, like 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 everyone loves uh you know uh, uh Chris Bennett from the, the, the this past weekend you know how he always does the uh you know he's dancing around doing backflips and in in, in in oh in, man in, in there and everything like that but like you know but Ben Ben also also had some quirky and odd <laughs> post fight <laughs> celebrations in, in, in there as well. And but, we're also uh, going to no. be joined. But but, but let, let's let me not not forget. We're also going to be joined by you know somebody you know you know me, me and Eddie talked to a lot over the years. You know, Car Carrie's definitely familiar with Helen Peralta is going to be joining us. You know, uh, you know she's a uh, uh, you know BKFC veteran. She's the last woman to beat the queen of the BKFC right now, Miss Christine Friera. Everyone forgets about that. But she's going to be taking on uh, uh, Bath and Hollow at, at, at Invict FC 49. That's going to be, be be a fun one. Obviously, Jillian DeCourcy is going to be try getting her first foray in, in, into that, that 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 title right there. If she oh, she no. seen if she can she can uh, d dethrone the, the champion that that, that Invicta has there at uh, at 105, I believe uh, uh, is is the is the belt that's online for the main event. It is. Um, Carrie knows. Carrie. And I'm excited. About that <laughs> I know Carrie's gonna get excited about that one. That's that's gonna be a well, fun I know one. Jillian's been training with, and uh, I know a lot of the girls that she's been training with, and I know a lot of the girls that have been down at Sarah's and Law, and you got a lot of one FC girls over there and shit. So she's got some really uh, heavy training partners, you know, Caitlin Chukagi, and everybody's not as great. She, she should do really well. Yeah, I mean, Carrie, listen, we didn't get to hear what you thought of last week's event for UFC 279. Yeah, because I mean, it was it was obviously on madness. Obviously, you know, we, we you know the the live reaction we got from uh from oh from, from, man <laughs> from Blake. Oh yeah, man, he was he was absolutely out of his mind. He was just you know mouth agape and he didn't know what the, what there he was like he was like wait 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 what that's a real thing that that's really happening that this just happened 
Because it happened so fast. I think the last time that happened was when Habib uh, was supposed to fight a bunch of fights. I was I was there. He ended oh. up fighting Ally Aquinta. That was the Ally Aquinta fight. Yes. Right? In New York at the Barclay Center. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, it was that's when the dolly was thrown. Yes, uh, that unfortunately, was like the most maddening card ever. Yeah. Does does this top that, Carrie, or or no? Oh, I no. don't. Just no. Every, Dana said it was like the worst thing that happened in 22 years of him. I'm <laughs> absolutely not, especially when you go and, and, and everyone's see, seen the embedded stuff. Are you freaking kidding me? So I didn't oh, get a chance oh, to see the embedded and bottles being thrown. Are you freaking kidding me? This is. It, ridiculous worst thing to happen in 22 years when the conor mcgregor thing happened stop playing with me dana stop really that was that was epic now there was a lot of rumors carrie that this was a, a maybe not rumors but the mma gods blessed us this was a better card do you agree oh 420 percent. i believe i did say the mma gods were were, 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 were <laughs> looking down on us what do you what do you think as soon as i heard that um, uh, Kamsad had, had missed weight. The second I heard it, I messaged Manimal and I was like, yo, Kamsad missed weight. He's like, imagine they throw Tony. And I'm like, that's the only thing that makes sense. It's the only thing that makes sense from the MMA gods that they would throw that together. And I honestly thought they were going to boot Kamsad from the card. Um, if it was Me anybody too. else, they would have gotten, they wouldn't have been fighting on that card. So it's coming that much overweight, but they wouldn't have, um, which is a little. You know, it's a little shitty, uh, you know, that the rules don't apply to everyone. However, we got the card that we really wanted and everybody didn't even know that they really wanted. You know, like the biggest surprise of like the last couple months, that fight was amazing. Oh uh, it was one of the best main events I've seen in fucking forever. Um, I got, I called one fight wrong on the whole card. So I impressed myself. That, that's actually really impressive. And while you say that, Carrie, I'm glad that you actually gave that to us because over here at Combat Deviants and BellyUpSports.com, we're going to be giving you guys our predictions for each fight card coming okay. up. Now, Steve, that's not just the UFC. I mean, we have BKFC and Victa. This is a really heavy schedule. How are yeah. we going to work this out? What, what predictions are obviously, we going to make obviously uh you know the 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 handful of us here are going to have to have some uh a little bit more verbiage so we can uh so eddie can get the graphics going up so so when we're talking about it we could just see, see our picks up there and we don't you know we we don't have to run down every single fight and break down every single one of them but you know obviously everyone can kind of see it you know you know for our for our betting degenerates out there they they you know they, they, they can make some bets you just you just heard, heard Carrie Carrie was uh uh was almost perfect late last week and you know obviously the the, the this this coming fight night should, should should be interesting you know uh got a got, got a couple local guys on the card obviously none of the lo lo locals lo local promotion uh, uh, you know uh media companies can cover it you got Joey body body bags Pfeiffer on the card you, you got my main main pack set sat sabs on the card he's, he's gonna be doing his thing man pat, I, pat I, what I, I card, man. pat but, you know, and i always and, I, and i'll continue to give the, uh, the 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 bigger conglomerate media companies crap until they they, they give the uh the local fighters the love the love they they, they absolutely deserve i don't want to jump ahead but we are going to be previewing Corey sanhagen Versus song. I mean, this card is absolutely uh, a sleeper card, right? Yeah. Nobody's talking about it. I was just looked it up and said that. I'm like, how is nobody talking about this fucking? But I don't want to jump ahead yet. So I want to know what you guys <laughs> have to say in the comments. You guys can engage right now on Combat Deviants here and be part of the show. And once we get to that segment, you guys can be part of all the engagement, all the excitement, along with all the interviews, which we had an amazing time last week. Now, I mean, for UFC 279, if we have to rate it, I mean, everyone wants to know a rating, guys. With uh, Steve, out of 10, for a pay-per-view, if you have to pay $90, Carrie, if you have to pay $90, what do you, I mean, that's a lot of money to ask for. $15 per fight. So <laughs> like that. Uh, Carrie, let's start with you. Uh, out of ten, what do you what do you give it? And guys, let us know in the comments. I mean, uh, I loved it. Uh, I'd say a personal opinion. 
eight you out had of, to buy it right like come on eight out of ten um would i have bought it yeah but i actually went out and watched it oh did you okay steve stop stop steve <laughs> Steve, stop. Big no-no, right? For guys, especially. Uh, dude, I freak out when I go out with everybody. Everyone's freaking out, telling me this about this fighter. And I, dude, I oh, go I schizophrenic. I buffalo wild for anymore. Everybody that's with me, my sister laughs. She's like, it's, she's like, you might as well just consider Carrie a fixture or just like not even with us. Cause I'm just like, don't what? I don't care? I'm like, because the second I get distracted, I'm like, what? Ah, I yeah. see you distracted. I'm like, fuck you, dude. Like, stop. This is you guys are fans. Stop it. So yeah, I try not to, but when I do, I just blinders. I mean, Carrie, you actually go to a lot of events. I do. I'm, you know, me and you have covered a lot of events. Steve yeah. goes to a lot of events, but like you said, and me and Steve have spoke about this so many times. It's so hard if you need to cover it. And you have to pay attention or else everyone's on your back about everything. It's, and you may have not noticed that the fight ended at 209. Did you guys notice that? I, that was insane. And I didn't notice that until after. And I was like, how fucking cool is that? <laughs> Steve, and I was just working on my guillotine the day before. I was so excited. I was like, ah, we just did that. Look, look at you. All excited about all of the day this. day before, killing them. So I brought this up on last week's show and everyone was really upset, Steve and Gary. Uh, we didn't bring up our first memories and our favorite memories of Nate Diaz. Uh, what what are they, guys? What are your first? I already said it was, it was. It, well, I mean, it, to, to that, it was the it was the first time he gave the the double blur bird flex flip off of the Kurt Pellegrino in, in New Jersey. That that was I already said that was one of my the favorite triangle. ones. Was that with the triangle? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was definitely mine. And he it's ended his career finished, like it, like, basically, the doing the flex, it's, it's, right? Come on, come on. I love him. Love him. But that season of Ultimate Fighter, if you guys don't remember, before that, Steve, you, you know the knowledge here. Mayhem versus Nick in the cage. That was before Tough Five, right? And and Nick was there for all of that. That was after. That was, that was after all of that, huh? Yeah, that was like... After season 10, that was after, that was after Ooh. that. So if people don't know what I'm talking about here, Ultimate Fighter Season 5, BJ Penn mm. versus Lil Evil, who, who gets slept on a lot, not in the Hall of Fame, which kind of going into next week's episode, Steve. Uh, we, we kind of previewing a guest here. I don't want to give too much away, but that's going to be a huge discussion. We want to know what you guys think. It qualifies for being in the Hall of Fame. BJ Penn in the Hall of Fame, obviously, on that season. Everyone wanted to be on his team. But Nate Diaz didn't care that season. He was spray painting 209. He stood out. And if there's anyone on that season, Gray Maynard, uh, Robert Emerson, uh, there, there was a bunch of great guys on that season. But Nate has had a long and amazing career. That was years ago. What now, though? What do you guys think he does now? Well, literally, like I said, you know, you know, go into our poll question. No one, no one won more last that last weekend than 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 Nate did. You know, he had he was going into this weekend. They were they were gonna ride him out and and make him get his his. They were gonna have him maul. They had this guy ready to tear him apart. Yeah. They were gonna have him going out where he was gonna have nothing to really, oh, oh, you know, you know, not to get these big offers and things and things of that nature. And then the MMA got God came down and struck and just said, you know what, Cosmo's not gonna make weight. And just threw everything in 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 in, in, in Nate's corner. Not, not just you know he gets the the matchup that that he wanted. Then then the the, the fight comes comes through and it couldn't go 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 better. Oh, yeah, man, you, know, right? you, you can kind of tell that that yeah he 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 didn't put the cardio for the for for the, the this fight. It, it's kind of obvious, you know. So you know him take, taking breaks in the middle of the fight, you know oh, uh, was... Tony walking backwards towards him and stuff like that. It, it, it was great stuff, but um, it, it's one of these things where he, where he wins it. He wins in a way where he ha he can do pretty much anything. He can go box if he want if he wants to go and do do banner go boxing. You know Dave Feldman already gone out there and said that Nate Diaz and and um 
and Mike Perry would be would be an amazing bare knuckle uh, uh, box match. Well, you know, uh, uh, another, and he wouldn't be tied down uh, there either. His own promotion, you know, where you know where you know, like like you you don't know how that how that plays out. Like and and the fact that he he he's going to be starting to promote you all. So he has so many more options and. You still don't know, never know if, if he does go go back in in the UFC. He's like, you know what, you know we're you know we're gonna pay you d- this that and a third for yeah you know, the trilogy. You know you know what fight you know that you need to c- c- come back and fight Connor and like have 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 had the big big that that that's the fight left to have for him. That is oh the, my the only reason the only reason he comes back to the UFC. But here's the other thing is is that. I, I, you know, you have to wonder when Connor is getting to the end of his, and he's getting ready to walk away too. Oh, so, man. I mean, oh. it's going to be an interesting thing. I, I think, uh, I think Nate is, is boxing. I think in, in Nate's heart, he, he's a hundred percent done with the UFC. He's, he's done with the, the extra stuff. I, you know, a lot of people didn't see like uh, some the, 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 uh, the, the um, pre, the pre fight video he did with uh, Megan Olivia. He's sitting there freaking trashing the shoes. Steve, all uh, this talk is making me feel old. Is there a new wrinkle coming in? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. This is insane. <laughs> Like I, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying. With all this talk, I'm sad. It makes me realize how how old we we are. we're getting now, and we've grown up with a whole group of people. It's sad to say bye to the Diaz brothers. Like uh, Dana White said, it's it's been a trip. It's been a blast, man. Uh, but to think that they would give up the money for a trilogy fight versus Connor. I mean, but does Connor even want? I mean. Dude, I'm having an anxiety. T- I gotta call my doctor. Hold on. Oh, come on. Does does it really happen in the next three years? Yes or no, guys? I'm gonna give my prediction. Yeah, if it happens this- three ways: super fight on um, like a one or two fight contract, whatever they did with Cyborg, or just a one fight contract of a super fight. Two boxing. But then, like Nate said, that would be the first fight because it's boxing. It you know, fight. Nate was be, insisting that he ever, wants I don't to come. See it happening in the UFC for some reason. I don't see it happening in MMA. I see maybe bare knuckle. I think that would be pretty cool, but I don't know if they'd be able to. Um, if Connor would do that, so I see regular boxing before anything, if, if anything. I think me and Steve's son are going to cry our ways home on this one. We're not going to see this fight. I don't think guys, I think we have to accept that we are not going to see Conor McGregor versus Nate Diaz three. And we're going to have to accept that. That's Which something sucks, that's that, hard. That fight really did need to happen. I wanted to see that fight happen so bad. Now a question here, this could settle it all. Maybe there doesn't need to be a third fight guys. Did you think that Nate won the second fight or no? That was a big debate. You don't gotta tell tell me, but uh, I'm 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 too old. Neither I die. I already told. I already already told Til you all about that. Till I die. He Carrie? could in 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 a uh, in in a real. If you think about it statistically, or in the fight world, um, a decision couldn't have gone the other way. There would be no room for a trilogy. So I mean, not that I'm saying that the fight was fixed. However, I am saying I do think <laughs> Diaz won that fight. But I think there would be absolutely no argument had it gone the other way. Like, where's the argument? Yeah, and, I mean, it, it was it was closer than it probably should be. But but yeah, when you let it go like that, you know, it, it, in in boxing and MMA, whatever, it goes to the judges. You know, you you, you let them break your heart. That's on you, man. Yeah, you, you got you got to end the fight and put and put it away and leave no, no doubt. So um, you guys are the best, man. This is perfect segue into uh, you guys are talking about the biggest winners. Well, let's talk about the biggest losers. Uh, what about Lee, man? He had the nicest suit, wasn't able to go up for the press conference, got carried away, and then in that fight, I mean, I have my scorecard over here, yeah, and I believe a lot, a lot of a lot of people feel feel like he he got uh he at got least two in the stick, at least two to one. I, that that was insane, dude. That was sad. That was a very sad story. Uh, like you said, you can't leave it to the judges, but this was a very sad one, man. That's a tough one. Yeah, this moment of silence goes to Lee. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I mean, Holland, Holland had to take take Schumann off on the short short notice. Uh, you know the 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 fake love tap and uh, you know the quick submission. 
I actually brought that up. I don't know if I sent it to myself in time. Oh, I, I didn't. But there is, and I, I just tweeted it out on the Combat Deviants, and I'll, I'll, I'll share it if I didn't. Um, Kevin Holland was just saying that this is Herb Dean's fault that he's got bloodshot eyes and Casey actually did an illegal move during that fight. Um, here it is right here. Kevin Holland, Herb Dean's fault onto the next. How about that? And I don't know if you guys can see on my screen yeah. here, he, but he, it's showing like, like him grabbing the, the, the top the, part of the, the gloves. Yes, exactly. <laughs> And it's, it's, you know, everyone's talking about the glove. You guys aren't going to be able to see nah, the glove yeah. tap, the fake glove tap, which was a huge thing going into this. But if you put it any other way, I think that fight would have gone just the same way. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not sitting there taking anything from Schumann off whatsoever, but like, it's, you know, also one of the, one of those things where he did kind of dress it afterwards. It was like anything that happened when the, when the bell rang is what, what happened. He was like, we touched gloves, you know, when, uh, when they called us to the center, so right, protect yourself at all times is what they say. I mean, it sucks, you know that's that's part of the game, but you know he's uh he's a hundred and ten percent playing up the villain role at this point in time. I don't care what anybody's saying. He's Darren, 100%, he's a hundred percent playing the heel right now, and he doesn't care. I, I got to say, Paul Acosta is 100% playing the baby face. <laughs> I saw videos this week that Dana White does want him to move up in a weight class. Do you guys I like that? Should. I think he should. Yeah. See, if, why, why where, should? Where you're, you're, you're having doctor, you're, you're having doctors coming in and tell, telling you, uh, you have to, you have to stop and uh, stop the weight cut. And, and, you know, you know, you're having medical issues and things of that nature. Well, if it's a medical issue, then you need to need to stay at, 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 at 185 pounds until, you know, doctor says it's okay for you to go down and, you know, and, and cut weight and go, get down to 170 pounds, uh, uh, you know, you know, you see other guys, you know, you know, who, who, who for most of their careers, when they, when they fight at, you know, you know, at that weight, when they, when they, you know, get out in the world, they're probably walking closer to like, you know, 195, 200 pounds when they're walking around their natural weight. So, it, you know, I always say it's better for guys to fight up than, than continue to, to deplete and, and hurt yeah. and kill yourself to get, get down to these weights. Stop, you know, you know, you know, stop wasting everyone's time, your own, your own time, you know, you know, other contenders, other fighters times by, by just trying to push that envelope, like be, trying to, trying to, trying to be, you know, the tough guy. Oh, I can make this. Listen, guys, it, you know, you, you know, what your body is capable of, you know, you know what the limits are. So, I mean, for, for this carry, uh, the, the females, especially, we're seeing today right now. I believe it was Aspen Lad was having yes. some issues with her weight. And yes. they've yes. been doing studies that girls hold on to more weight naturally because you guys are, are meant to uh, carry, carry children, yes. which is very dangerous for, for women and for men as well. I mean, have you guys seen the cyborg videos of cutting like, weight? Oh, without a question. I mean, look, I can tell it's you scary. From, from having been a uh, bajillion weight. I've been like, you know, uh, 105 pounds, what, three years ago, coming off all my shoulders and inju shoulder injuries. And I mean, I was like walking around at 105. I looked sickly skinny and it was terrible. And that's when oh. I met Animal and he was like, we got to get you in better shape. Back in the day when I got sober, I came out of rehab at 135. Um, I'm now 118 and I lost... Oh, oh, fuck. I went from 22% uh, body fat since I've been working out for the last two years with John to now I'm at like 13.9 at 118. And, and our, how are you feeling? I'm like, well, I, I, I feel great, but it affects you as a woman. Whether you want to believe it or not, it absolutely does. Like my you know, schedule, everything's off now, like dramatically because of that. So your body fat content does have a lot to do with that, especially. There, there's now, the stuff right there. Here's somebody that actually doesn't have to really worry yeah. about cutting too much weight or sitting in a sauna for too long. As he's, he's like, I'm enjoying my food right now. 
<laughs> He's sitting here eating nachos right now, and I, I got to love it, man. We got our next guest joining us right here, uh, BKFC heavyweight Bobo O'Bannon, man. What's going on, my dude? Oh, man, just love the lights. How about y'all? Oh, let, let me walk outside where the lighting's a little bit better here. I'm sorry. Bro, you can the whole video yourself, bro. I can't see anything around you anyway, man. <laughs> well, come on. My big old behind. Oh, six foot three, fourteen hundred and eighty-seven pounds of me, huh? Good night. I mean, Bobo, thank you for joining us on this episode of Combat Deviants. Uh, we got an amazing lineup of questions for you here because we are big fans of you over here. I don't know if you know that, but come on. Man, Awesome. I'm a big fan, man. I was raised with the Lord. Uh, I was named after, let me let me say this. I was named after my grandfather, who was a deacon at my church. Uh, I, I, I was raised to follow, and I one day would really like to be a deacon because, uh, you know, there's nothing better than preaching and making people feel better. When, I, when I'm having an anxiety attack, man, and I, and I call somebody in my family and they say, uh, something that leaves me off where I don't feel right. It, it doesn't make sense. If somebody calls me, I have I have something to say to them that will leave them lifted, man. But with my own struggles, I may be able to preach, but I may not. I cannot follow sometimes. And I got to ask you, man. Sometimes it's it's easy to preach, but how do you follow, man? Um, there's a little one, two, three method. I gotta uh, count to three and hold my breath. Now, literally, I know that sounds stupid. That sounds stupid. <laughs> Trust me, it sounds stupid whenever I say it, and I'm the one that does it. But I got to hold my breath and count to three while I hold my breath for just a second. What that does is that keeps me from saying anything at all because I'm not real smart, and sometimes I'm going to tell you exactly the thought that's going through my brain. It may not really be how I feel. It might just be how I'm caught up in that moment at that time, and I'm fixing to blow your hair back. <laughs> but so I, I hold my breath and then my little count to three real quick and kind of compose myself, get myself together. I'm like, all right, now let me react to this situation in a good way rather than just blowing somebody's hair back and telling the joker, hey, let's go roll in the rocks, bud. <laughs> you know, and, and I'm not saying it's easy, man. And I'm not saying I'm I'm able to do that every time. I'm, come on, I'm human. I'm 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 gonna mess. I'm gonna screw but up. But you all are the time. you are a fighter, though. You are a fighter, and that's an inspirational uh place that you've you've chose to stand at. I want you. Come on. And come on, I, I got a question here. You know. Come on. It's a difficult place to stand at, right? As a fighter, because you have your family watching you as you are sitting in front of a storm coming at you right now in the form of UFC's Ben Rothwell. And for your family, you know, it may be really scary. To you, it may be really scary. How do you calm them? How do you calm yourself? How do you ensure a full, like, full embodiment, full warmth, full... Uh, make sure that everyone knows everything will be okay, especially if you have children or something. How do you go about that? Because it could be difficult for them. Well, baby girl is uh, four years old. She'll be five in September. And um, we just let her know that, hey, daddy's going to uh, wrestle with his friends. We're just sparring. We're boxing. We're just <laughs> playing with one another, you know. Um, so... <clears throat> that's how we get by with baby girl. My my boy, my stepson, he, he loves it to death. He loves the fighting to death. And he gets to see all these pretty little pictures and gets to see the up close of it or whatever. Baby girl does too. I mean, just let him, uh, let baby girl know, hey, daddy's just playing with his friends. You know, you, you're you going to get bumps and bruises and cuts and scrapes and scratches when you play with your friends sometimes. And ain't no big deal, you know. He's going to uh, put some medicine on you, little bobos, and keep on going. And um, that's how we deal with it there. Um, I like that. My wife, my wife's a little more on a real level. <laughs> you know, <laughs> she's a firecracker. <laughs> it gets a little more real there, especially you know. My, my wife has twenty something, different, twenty six, twenty seven different diseases that they know about. Um, a lot of these are intestinal diseases. Uh, 
it's, uh, stuff that messes her with her esophagus and her intestines, um, heart diseases. She's got a heart, a major heart disease. They did an experimental surgery for back uh, when she had to fight to keep her alive till she turned 18. Hold on, that's probably just to mess me up. She's pulling in with the car, and the Bluetooth <laughs> probably gonna jump. You running, bro? You running? You, like the run. you heard that thing from I a am. mile away, Bobo? No, oh, I, no, no. The, the, look, the the Bluetooth to jump. What happened is, and it happens all the time. You know, I. I... Oh, no, see, that's what he's talking about. Oh, that that's the jump. But we're, we're used to that once he gets inside. Well, the, the trick to that, guys, in case you don't know, is shutting the Wi-Fi off and going off your service. Little little evil Eddie hint right there. Yep. See? See there? I you, told you that car was going to mess me all up. You went wrong. <laughs> but can you hear me now? Yes. Sir. Oh, I, yeah. We can hear you loud. Here she is. Oh, she is. goodness. What she got? She got your food. Hold on. Oh. Are, are we good now? Bobo, well, well, I love how you heard oh, that from a mile okay. away. See, that reminds me of... This, ha uh, this happens a lot. <laughs> yeah, that crazy woman. This happens a lot whenever I'm training. I'll be out here... Mm. No, they got their food. They ain't no my food involved. Uh-uh. Gosh, darn Bobo, uh, getting 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 back to that question, you were you were saying your wife <laughs> deals with this. Whatever it was, he likes it. <laughs> you can hear it. <laughs> I I could see the I could see uh, the frustration when the wife pulls up. Now you know you're you're going to have this fight on October first. The days are ticking down. What is the stress level like in the house? If you if you can hear me right now, Bobo. Steve Carey, you can hear me, right? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. All right. We, Bobo has been kidnapped. We don't know. Uh, stand by. But, <laughs> Carrie, can can you understand this? Could you imagine dating a fighter? I mean, Carrie, if I was dating you, I'd be freaking out. Carrie, be careful. Steve, I'm, I am I know you go through it uh, all the time. You don't even got to be doing anything, bro. You know, you don't even got to fight. I stay away. From all of it, I have learned. But at some point, for a fighter, man, that's got to be really difficult. And for Bobo, you know, he really follows with the Lord. And oh, here he goes. He's coming oh, back yeah. here. Bobo. And I love that. I love that he's got that in his name and stuff. That's right up my alley. Because nobody talks about uh, God. Nobody talks about whatever. It's religion, spirituality. No. Oh, sure will. Differ it all the time, and I'm like, "Fuck y'all!" I roll with you. It's 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 cr it's a crazy thing because here's here's Bobo, Bobo. We were back. You're you're yeah. in a white room. Are you safe, Bobo? Are you okay? Are you safe? <laughs> He's good. I'm blinking twice. <laughs> then help. <laughs> then help. The, the big one is home. Good. Now I'm in trouble. Look, I told y'all, I went running from that vehicle. Every time me and Coach is outside training, we train up underneath the carport right there. I'll take you out there in a minute and show you the uh, the little setup, my little my little gym. But uh, we train via FaceTime, and I've got my my little headset on every time. They'll go and they get in the car to leave. I'm like, my God, why can't y'all just give me 20 minutes? All I need is 20 minutes to finish my session. Now they go and they get in the car, and guess what? It connects straight to the car. Then it goes oh, from me yeah. listening to coaching instructions to them listening in the car as they're driving down the road, coach instructing me. <laughs> but, you know, one of them things of life that we deal with, I reckon, you know, not, not that big of a deal, but, uh, Anyhow, that's why I took off running, and you seen what it did to me. You know what's funny though, Bobo? As you say that, everyone listening and all of us know exactly what you're talking about right now. So yeah, we're right there with you. What is the tension like in the house? Because you seem pretty laid back, Steve. Are you? Are you sent, Carrie? Are you sent? He seems pretty laid back right now. Mm -hmm. Bobo, Bobo's the chill man. I love him. Man, look, man, this is until it gets this, time to get in there, then he becomes a B. Yeah, I turn into that guy right there. That's the silly fellow there. <laughs> but uh, no, look, man, it, you know, life life is way too short. And my coworkers, we all do the same thing. We all have this conversation at one point or another. Life is way, way too short to be uptight, to be upset, to 
um, be in a mood that puts everybody around you in a in a attention filling environment. I mean, nobody got time for it, especially a person my size, man. You bring me in the room, you have everybody in the room laughing. You bring me in the room in a bad mood, all of a sudden the entire environment of the room changes. It goes one of two ways. Yeah. It goes yeah. One of two ways. Yeah, just because this big guy's in a bad mood now, all of a sudden, just his the vibes he's putting off changes the mood of the entire room. There's 20 people in there. He just changed it because one big old sap sucker's in a bad mood. Man, I don't want to be like that. I want everybody around me to have fun. I have fun, but look, if you go out and you have a good time and, uh, you know, just you having a good time, that's one thing. But if you can go out and have a good time and everybody around you is enjoying themselves too, Oh, that's different. That's a different level of a good time there. Look, I'll put myself out a little bit to make sure that everybody around me is having a good time. And that's when things is real fun, man. When, I got a when personal you... question, though. Come on. Come. Are you ready for it? Come I'm on. Totally ready. Me and Carrie and Steve were just talking about pickup lines. Last week, we had Blake Builder, oh, who just got a <laughs> contract. What was your first pickup line uh, with your wife? How did you approach her? Because uh, before you answer... Uh, Blake told us the best way to go about it is the Forrest Gump approach, which is to approach a woman and say, hi, my name's Forrest. What's yours? Or insert your name here. Uh, how, did, how did you and your wife meet? How did you go about it? Y'all ain't going to believe me, man. Dude, we, 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 y'all, y'all won't believe this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm going to give you mine and my wife's whole dating story all the way up to marriage. Um, trust me, we got plenty of time for this one. Um, I created a, uh, a profile on a site called Plenty of Fish. I and, uh, on that website. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. That actually like has a good relationship from that website. Go on. Sorry. No, you no, know, you're fine. Plenty of Fish. I created a website. Look, I'll let y'all know something. They are a bunch of scallywags, male and female, yes. on Plenty of Fish. Because I was um, uh, approached several different times on Plenty of Fish. Hey, me and my family's going to Orange Beach. I see you're in Bala Battery. It ain't 45 minutes away. Won't you come? You know, if you got vacation, take vacation from work. I'll put you up in a different condo. I'll give you $150 a day to go and do what you want to do. Then at nighttime, after the family goes to sleep, I'll come stay with you. I'm like, you know, that sounds amazing. Yeah, it does. But I'm not that guy. I'm sorry. I, 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 sometimes I wish I could have been. Maybe. I don't know. I'm seeing what it was like. I, I was never that guy. I just couldn't. I'm, I'm sorry. Say what you want to about me. I, I just couldn't do that. That wasn't my cup of tea, bud. And I wasn't taking a sip of yours either. So <laughs> I just couldn't do it, you know. Well, after, I don't know. A dozen different requests like this, like women, women, dude, I'm serious. I had so many women hit me up like, hey, look, I'm going out with some friends for a high school reunion this weekend. Come on. Did come you, on. Do you off the rip? Tell them you're a fighter. Do you use a fighter profile? No. Like, oh, baby, no. I like it rough. Or no, what? no, 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 no. What, what do you do? Clean cut. Look, man. So what do you do for a living? Me, I'm a go uh, what gonzo journalist. I, I love, I live through you guys. I look for inspiration. I look for the stories that bring people up. Uh, without it, I, I am bed, I'm literally bedridden. I feed off inspiration from, from, from inspirational stories. My mom had me on mushrooms, so that has to be something to do with it. Uh, but besides, I'm just an artist and all around time out, for positive time out, time out, stop. You are screwing my whole story up. My whole point. I can't make it now. You just screwed my life up. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> my mom but, because, yeah, because now I know your answer to the question goes against what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> but, but for a living, I'm a millwright. I'm a millwright for a living, a maintenance mechanic in a paper mill. Um, I don't go to a woman right whenever I meet her, whenever I was in the dating scene and try to be like, Oh, I'm a millwright. You know, you, you want to go out with me? I can fix stuff. <laughs> no, nobody care about that. I, th I mean, Carrie, what would you think? Carrie, what would you think? What? You, you went to that? 
what? if he approached you and, and said that, what would you, what's your response? Listen, a, a guy that can fucking do something for yeah. himself and actually can work and make something with his hands and do stuff. Yeah, the fuck I'm into that. <laughs> do you want to know what I hear from half the time? Oh my God. These guys don't fucking. My mom tells me I'm not a real man if I can't do things around the house. I mean. Well, but look, my, my whole point is, is I'm, I'm not going to come up to some a woman and try to start, you know, try to organically build something off of, hey, I'm a millwright, I'm a mechanic, I'm a, I'm a welder. You know, you're not going to go with any crap like that. So it's the same thing with fighting. It's just a way to make money is really all it is. So I'm not going to come up and be like, hey, I'm a fighter. <laughs> you can catch me on TV. No, no, nobody care about that, man. That's kind of, kind of gay a little bit of you. I see, I see. I see so, what you're saying. So no, I wouldn't do any of that. But what? man, folks, folks should get on there and they these women just crazy, man. Oh my god, I was lean and mean and uh, sex machine. I guess they thought. Um, so I get all these Fobo, different kind of offers. Fobo, Fobo, you come on. When you become the champ, you can't hide it. Don't tell me when you become the heavyweight champ, you're going to be able to hide this from anybody. I, you you wouldn't be able to. Yeah, if you were a but, bitch. Come on. We, which, which is awesome that I'm very, yeah, yeah. Which is awesome that I'm very happily married now, very happy, and I'm I'm perfectly fine with that. And it's you don't have to worry about any of this scallywag stuff, you know. I'm like all them games and whatever. Well, anyhow, so I, I seen all that, and I get on there one night, and I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm fixing to delete this thing, man. It seems like all anybody wants to do is get together and you know rub belly buttons and i you know just kind of <laughs> kind of not you know that's kind of not my thing i i gotta i gotta have something in common with you we gotta have you know a relationship something to build off of i don't want to just get together and just rub belly buttons get it like that you know that's, no so um get on there and go to the i'm gonna give one last look so i'm you know doing all the swiping left i think it is to do uh, get rid of them or whatever and I'm swiping get rid of them and I go to swipe this one and I woo I pull it back I'm like, hold on let me let me look at it there's something going on here I felt something so uh, I go to a profile look I'm on plenty of fish these jokers all they want to do is rub belly buttons together and uh, this woman is going to talk about how um God comes first in her life <laughs> wow um the very next line says, no man will ever come before her son. <laughs> Morals on here? Get points, down. Points. Points. Yeah. Right. She went straight to the top, bud. No, straight to the top. And then uh, she was like, if, if you got a problem with that, you need to swipe left or whichever way. But uh, otherwise, you know, send me a message. We can talk. I'm inbox hello here i come so i sent her a message i'm like hey look you know first of all i'm not gonna lie to you your physical appearance is what brought me to your profile this first thing i've seen you know then once i read you're about me you just got beautiful you came beautiful all of a sudden it's just amazing you're gorgeous i love what you stand for and you know hopefully i hear back from you that's about just what i said that's um, a good that's a good pickup line though that was you know, yeah that was that, honest that's what I was doing. So I did that, and uh, I set my phone on my chest right here, and I go back to watching TV. Look, about five minutes later, my phone vibrates. I'm like, who in the world is trying to message me this time of the night? I look down, and a plenty of fish notification. Like, oh, God, I dropped my phone trying to open unlock it real quick. Oh, it was hurt. The vibration, was your phone on your belly button? Was it rubbing your belly button? It, it, it was sitting right here on my chest, right between my chesticles. It, 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 I love that. That's, yeah, that's actually an amazing right? story right there. That really is well, a lot. So I'm, I'm going to break it down for you real quick, give you a real quick version of everything. We I've sent her a message, uh, PM part of January the 19th, We chat or December the 19th. We chatted on into December the 20th. Found out we had a mutual friend who brought her to Mobile. We met in person December the 22nd. I went and met her family on Christmas Day. There was another whole little backstory there, but it ended up I went and met her family on Christmas Day, December 25th. I went back the next weekend, asked her daddy, could I marry her? Um, then January the 15th on her parents' anniversary, we ended up getting married. Wow. 
So it was that perfect. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so, yeah. And look, I promise you, I wish I'd have found that fat joker about 10 years before I did. I really do. Uh, Jerry, I mean, let me you tell break, you, you, you should make a commercial for that website because you're like the only success story I've ever heard come off of that. And you're absolutely right. The quality of people on there is really fucked up. Yeah. yeah. Man, the quality is like, I, I haven't been on there in years, but like, congratulations. That's huge. Thank you, Mel. Yeah, it's, it's like, I promise you, every, there, there was this one girl, and I ain't going to call her name, it ain't, it ain't that kind of important, but there was this one girl, she, uh, you know, my about me was talking about church, and, you know, um, God comes first, and, you know, give a little about me, my little spill or whatever, how I am and who I am and all. Well, this joker sends me a message, she's like, hey, yeah, I'm a Baptist girl, and in the church and everything, I'm like, oh, cool, Baptist, they can't do anything, you know, everything's a sin to a Baptist, so... Yeah, that'd be cool, you know, let's go on a date. So we went on a date, and um, next thing I know is she was like, okay, look, we're holding up this waitress's table. I think it's kind of unfair. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm going to leave her a big tip, so it'd be okay. So, yeah, but let's go down the road. I got this place that I know that I hang out at, you know, a little bit here and there. Let's go down the road, and we can hang out and talk here some. Cool, no problem. She knows somewhere where we can hang out. Hey, cool. This is a scary story. It might it might end up being a scary story. Well, that's what I was thinking too on the yeah. way down there. Yeah. Dark roads and all. Look, bud, we pull up to this place on this little strip mall and it's dark on the inside with a few little neon lights. I'm like, no, no, not one of these. No. Yeah. I'm going in there. Yeah, look, said, yeah. look, not only did we go into the bar there, you but said, I already left my big tip. Look, yeah. <laughs> Look, as we're walking in, people is calling her by name. Oh. Yeah, I was like, oh. You should oh, that. I'll see you later, Sue Ann. Yeah, that, that kind of Baptist. Oh. I already left my singles at the restaurant. Yeah, I don't want to come back here no more. I mean, so anyhow, we, we kind of, we hung out, I stayed, we hung out a little bit or whatever. And, you know, I, I drank a beer or two here and there. And I, I think I did have like half a beer and I just, I wasn't feeling it, bud. I'm sorry. I wasn't feeling it at all. And I was kind of, yeah. She said, well, it was nice hanging out with you. Uh, you know, call me tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sit by your phone and hold your breath, babe. As you get yeah. from this part crying yeah. in the shower. Yeah. Dude, I'm I'm I was like fifty five minutes from home by the time we went to her little spot. Man, I'm I'm like got tears coming out of my eyes all the way home. I like, finally went on a date with one of these plenty of fish girls, one that seemed okay and she just wet and I screw that side, I'm gonna go home and delete it. And so the next weekend yeah, I went to go delete it and found, found my, my wife who was, look, so, funny story, all of about seven, you know, we got married, what, 15 days after we met, something like that, something stupid like that, all of about seven or eight days after we met, she's like, so what are we? I was like, well, I'm a human, you know, I don't, I, I think you're a human, it's kind of, yeah, that's the vibe I'm getting, I don't think you're an alien, but. These days, you know, who's to say? Got a belly button. Yeah, you you do got a belly button. I saw your belly button. You want to rub on mine? The answer's no. Button. Yeah. Tell us that you know that aliens don't have belly buttons. So that's how you know. Good that's point. No, I just Valid. Know something we don't. Valid. That's an ama oh, amazing man. story. That this really is. is. This is going Wilson, I, I, I'm going to rein us back in real fast. Come so, on. So, Bo, the, 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 this this fight, the, this is this is the fight that as soon as they they announced Big Ben Rothwell was was was, was co coming coming to your promotion, this is a fight that it's you so you went on, on social media, you went told your aunt, your uncle, <laughs> your your aunt that this is the fight you wanted. What what right. what makes this fight the fight you wanted? Is is it is it the name? Is it something about his style that that you that you that you like and you just want want to get in there, and mix it up with this guy? What, what what was it about this fight that intrigued you? Man, he's big. He's real. He's real big. He's real strong. He um he's got a big name. Uh, he likes to bang. I, I've I've watched his fights. I've watched plenty of his fights. He likes to get in there. He likes to bang. I like to bang. You know, it's uh it's kind of a fun pastime for the both of us. It seems. Um, I am also a man that likes. 
to please the fans. You know, I yeah, winning is cool, man, but I would rather lose an exciting fight than win a boring fight. And hands down every day of the week. Uh that's no, just what I want to see. you're one of these guys you don't say no to anybody like like you know, uh you know, uh, the last one out was uh, was Belcher, and you know, you know, it, it's kind of a uh, you know the the, the well known secret that 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 he 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 has his own special sauce, and 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 that's not something Bo was like shoot yourself up or whatever you want, bro. Just, just, yeah, just, let's get it. Look, what I, come fight night. What I didn't plan on was catching COVID twelve days before the fight. That sucked. <laughs> That, and but, that's another thing, like, like, you, like, you just, it just takes everything out of you, dude. Like, like, like the, the last few days, like that, like people don't understand, like the, how, like that, that last, you know, that the, the last handful of days, get, 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 it, get in the last few things right when you, and when you're battling something like that, and like, like if, if, if you know, if you haven't had it, like, dude, it, it's almost like, like the worst cold you ever had, times a thousand, and then, then you know, your body is zapped completely. Plus zapped. the flu. Plus man. the flu, yeah. It, but you know, I, I look, man. I, my coach, he's in Wales over there. And we're training on Facetime, and he sees me having to stop and puke and hang up on him and go inside and use the bathroom and everything for about two weeks, three weeks for the fight. And uh, he begged me to pull out. My wife begged me to pull out. I'm like, look, I'm no, uh, that's not something I do. You know. It, I don't care if I know. If I know I'm finna go in and get the hell beat out of me because of whatever, I'm just gonna do it. My first fight, whenever I fought Troy Beats, I think it was like seven days before the fight, I had to, uh, I come, was chopping wood and my axe went into my left foot and uh, I, I put some liquid stitch on it, put some tape around it, put two socks on and, and like that night went and sparred with Chase Sherman over in uh, Biloxi because I told him I was coming to spar with him and I'm one if I tell you I'm going to do something my gosh hell or high water I'm going to do it the ladies love you the ladies love huh? you yeah, I- oh, good <laughs> thank you thank you look so I get over there and I got blood pouring all out out of my boot onto the canvas over there and uh uh, they couldn't figure out where it's coming from. I was like, I think I got a pretty good idea. <laughs> and uh, so I leave straight from Spar and don't even go home and take a shower. I go straight to emergency room in Mobile and get 10 stitches put in my foot. And I think it was like eight or nine days later, go and fight Troy Beats. Still got 10 stitches in my foot. Uh, still got trickles of blood coming on my boot, on my sock, through my, you know, with my boots at work. And so, um, anyway, just suck it up, Buttercup. Let's get after this. Something my mom always used to tell me. And, uh, <laughs> you know, so we just went to work, man. You know, uh, literally went to work. Still stayed working, and uh, went in the ring and did what I needed to do and got over. Hey, look, I think it was about ten or eleven days before I fought Mike Kyle. Uh, I broke my tailbone. Like the same day that I agreed to the fight, I broke my tailbone. Look, you want- I've experienced that a couple of times where I thought I've broken it, but to break it actually, like that's got to go through your. Oh, I can't even imagine how that like must feel. How did how did you break it? I fell. I fell on my tailbone and landed on a a, a piece of metal pipe that was laying down, and it was like a, a six inch piece of pipe and. Uh, I fell whenever I fell, my feet come up <laughs> and my tailbone went straight. Like, thank God I hit my tailbone because that's what broke my fall. I could have been hurt or something. Yeah. Idiot. Yeah, I landed straight on my tailbone. That's all that touched the pipe. Like, it, it because my tailbone stopped me, then my butt cheeks come around and caught the pipe too. <laughs> but it, it was all tailbone, man. And uh, I broke the fire out that thing. Look, you want to talk about hurting? Like, I decided for about 45 seconds that it even hurt to breathe, so I just held my breath till I got lightheaded. It was bad, man. Um, sleeping on my belly, uh, having a ride, the whole ride all the way down to Tampa or wherever we went to, uh, I was switching butt cheeks the whole ride down there. Sweaty butt cheeks, too. It's hot down there. <laughs> you can believe that. It was hot, friggin' straining and trying to keep my tailbone from hurting, man. It hurt like crap. You find but, a lot of things in your belly button in the warm weather. 
I'll tell you that. Man, tell me. Ooh, I don't want to talk about I don't. I don't. Look, little known fact about me. I have an Audi. Yeah. Audi, I'm, not talk- or a car? I'm not talking about the car. I'm not. I'm not, I'm, I'm broke. <laughs> All, right. All right. Let's do a vote. Who's, who, 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 I got an any. Any. Who, who, who's got an Audi? <laughs> one to one. All right. Carrie and Steve, where are we at? We got to break this now. Carrie, you got an any or Audi? Any. Any, any Steve. Any. All right. Yeah. Bobo, sorry. See. I'm I'm a rare creature. Let me ask you about the uh, the main event on on the card you're on. You, you know, it's 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 gonna be uh you know uh, uh Mr. Hero. You know he's 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 getting his chance at at, at the title, and, and we're also gonna get uh uh Mr. Mr. Lorenzo Hunt is uh, is is is, def- is defending. How 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 do you see that fight playing out? Are you sticking man. Up? I'm yes, yes. I'm gonna be honest with you. I really like the both of them fellas. I, I really do. I like the both of them. Uh, I have had genuine conversations with the both of them, and genuinely like the both of them. Uh, it's one to where the way I see it, two of my buddies are going in there to uh, fight. I hope they put on one heck of a fantastic show. I hope they both just beat the bloody stew out of one another. And uh, I hope that the both of them leave the ring free of any serious injury. Yeah. Um, who wins? Who loses? Draw? Something man, I'm weird, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think they're they're really close. Like you know, I, I know everyone's in love with uh, with Lorenzo's speed and his power, but but man, man, you know, you know, you know, Henry, man, he's just he's got something special in him, man. Do, do you remember Quentin's first fight? Yeah, man, like like everyone, you know, he, everyone was dogging on him. Everyone was just like, like, who's this dude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. even in here, what, what, like, like it was just like he was, he was like, he was a man on the island, man, and he, and he's kind of, he's kind of earned his stripes o- o- over the past like year and a half or so, and kind, kind of yeah. got in there and and and, and 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 it's fought in some 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 really tough guys and and done really well. I, I mean, I, I'm really interested to see how how this fight plays out. I want to see if if he can if he can work the inside game to to, to nullify the power and just just be, be able to to do what he's been doing. It's going to be really interesting to see if he can uh, impl- implement that on 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 Lorenzo. Yeah. Well, Lorenzo can fight real good at distance. He's always fought real good That's at right. distance. He he seems to do pretty good on the inside. Uh, he hero henry he owns quentin owns the inside fighting game he is spectacular on the inside however if you go back and watch the last few fights his game at range has come a long ways too he's come uh, i mean gotten tremendously a tremendous we'll amount see better how, how, how they, they implement their, their their game plans for 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 this one it's going to be it's going to be a fu- uh, a fun one for sure um, I mean, oh, Steve, I got to ask him something. I, I know where you're going. I got to ask him something, though. Uh, like, have, have you seen Ben Rothwell's fights in the past? Like, have you been a, a, a big fan of watching the heavyweights come up over the last 10 years uh, in boxing, in MMA, and has Ben been on your radar as no. somebody that you've wanted to fight? No, no, not, not, even, not even a little bit. Look, man, I'm an idiot. And I'm just gonna go ahead and be honest with y'all. No, you're uh, not, man. No, you're not. No, no, I am. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> I wear. Look, that's a title I wear proudly, my buddy. Okay. <laughs> I've worked on it. Look, so I want to be honest with y'all for a second. Uh, they was talking about this Ben Rothwell signing with the BKFC and everything, and I didn't have a clue who they was talking about. Not even a little bit. Uh, so I had to consult my buddy. Uh, What's his name? Google about Google, this man. Yeah. Yeah. My me and the Googster. Yeah, yeah. Me and the Googster had a little conversation there real quick. Figuring out. Yeah, yeah. See, see, you know what it's about now. I'm digging on Billy Button there on Google. Yeah, and uh trying to figure out who this was. And then uh he sent me over to YouTube and uh I got to see a little bit of him now. Like, oh, that looks fun, actually. Let's, yeah. uh, let's 
let's have a go at that. So that that's how all that came about. And uh, man, look, like I said, I I wear my little idiot title. I wear that kind of proudly. It's self-proclaimed too, by the way. I gave that to me. Um, <laughs> but uh, my wife agrees with me, so there's that. Um, <laughs> yeah, and when she she's large, so like the she's first like real step is large. Admitting the truth, right? The first. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But like I say, to her agreeing with me, and she loses blood circulation when she lets her neck hang down like that. All that skin up underneath there, all them rolls, cuts off circulation to her brain. She kind of, anyhow, that's so, the story well, for doing that. Now, now, Bo, I know you like fighting in, in your backyard. I, I, you know, I don't want to talk Dave about it. We've been doing a whole lot, lot of expansion and stuff. Like you know, we ju we just seen a, another event in Thailand. You know, we're, we're, I, we know they're gonna go over to UK again soon. If you had to put a stamp on your passport to fight for BKFC, where's the one place you would want to go? Anywhere in the UK, uh, any, any, as, as close to Wales as possible. You know, my, my coach is Welsh, and uh, he lives in uh, uh, close to Swansea, I think it is, over there. But um, uh, if a coach had about 200 people reach out to him, wanting to know if we was going to be on the London card. Yeah, I know. Uh, that's, about, that's what, that's what, where, where I was yeah. kind of going, because I know they just had yeah. London. And he said it went great, and they're gonna they're gonna try to go back there immediately. So yeah. So they, if you're if you're victorious October first, win, lose or draw, obviously, it, you're gonna go out there and say, hey, next time you you go over the pond and go to the UK, Bobo I want to go. Pond. I want to go. Yes, I do. Uh, not to mention, like I said, uh, Coach said he had a few hundred people reach out to him about w wondering if we was gonna be on the card, and they was wanting tickets. Like he had some businesses reach out to him wanting front row tables, plural. I was like, my gosh, man. Okay. <laughs> you need to make that happen, brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it, we could uh, we could sell a bunch of tickets over there. You know, we got a question from from, from the chat here. So uh, obviously, uh, they they want to they want want to know the information for the, for the event. You know, uh, where to tune in. And and do you have a, a a promo code for 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 the for the coming event? Yes, I do, and um, I will get my wife to send it to you because I'm I'm slightly uh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I don't know how to find all that stuff, but uh, yeah, I, I'll get my wife to send it to you after the uh, uh, interview here. <laughs> Maybe we'll post it on comments or something. We'll definitely uh, put where... it in the description for sure. Beautiful. Beautiful. Bobo, you, you say you want to go over to the UK, but if you're anything like me, man, I am petrified to get on an airplane, man. Are, are you used to flying? <laughs> I, wouldn't to say, fly, right? I wouldn't say I'm used to flying. Um, they, I was called uh, one Monday while I was at work, uh, wanting to know would I come in to a Friday night fight. It was actually that particular Friday night. Um, I, so, uh, it was down in Fort Lauderdale. So Monday at work, I'm just a regular employee. Then all of a sudden, uh, Wednesday, I'm having to get on an airplane to fly down to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And then, uh, <coughs> another occasion I flew out to Worley, Idaho and, uh, you know, back and forth from there. And we had to actually land in Spokane, Washington, and be shuttle bus back to the casino in uh, Worley there, the Cordia Lane Casino. But uh, so yeah, I have flown before. I'm not opposed to it. It's it's not like Hello. you remember that name so well, the Cordia Lane Casino. Did you lose a lot of money there? So you remember that very well, like it haunt you or something. <laughs> I was beating the ever more piss out of a guy named Skylar Anderson. And uh, just beating him relentlessly, threw an overhand right and broke his orbital wow. and severed, I think he said, two of the muscles that hold your uh, eye in socket and wow. tore his retina and broke my hand. And uh, he gets up and keeps throwing that jab, head butted me, busted my head all open, and all I had was my left hand. And I uh, come back to the corner and I'm like, why don't you throw in your right hand? Well, it's broke, bud. Broke. <laughs> well, they didn't believe me, so I went out there for one more round. I held my right hand up, and he threw a hook and, or a punch and hit me in my right hand. I, 
I pulled it back down and let him continue beating on my face because it didn't hurt near about as bad to the face as it did to the hand. And all I had was a jab and left hook. And uh, they, they stopped the fight after that round. I took my glove off of me and seen how my hand was swollen up through my hand wraps. They was like, oh, my God, your hand's broke. You reckon? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Did I tell you this? Yeah, I just told you it now, felt now, like it. Now, speaking of yeah. beans, right? Now, speaking of beans, we had, we, had, we had a question in the chat here, bro. What are your what are your thoughts on on uh, on 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 Silva and J Jake Paul uh, down question. there in Arizona, uh, October 29th? Yeah. The, 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 does uh, does Anderson put Jake away, or 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 or, or, it, or do you feel you have no idea what we're talking about? Feels there, there there's some type of uh, predetermined stuff going on here. <laughs> yes, uh, I feel like in a real fight, Anderson Silva beats the forever more piss out of Jake Paul. I uh, sincerely do. Uh, I wish one of them little boys was big enough to uh, fight me. I'd love to. Man, yes. That would be amazing. <laughs> so, so, so if you can get your hands on Jake Paul, if he would ever ha ha have the cojones enough to go up to a heavyweight, you, you, you would love to get your hand on that kid? Jake or Logan, whichever one of the sisters wants it. Yeah, well, here's, no it, doubt. Here's the thing. <laughs> Logan's in the WWE. Would you ever do that now? Is that something you would ever Dude. do? I would love to do that. That would, uh, I have a friend in Mobile uh, who wrestles under the <laughs> the name the Rainbow Warrior, and he's a super awesome showman. Super awesome showman. Showmanship is out of this world. Um, he's a bit heavy set, so he, you know, and he's been, had a few accidents, so his uh, he's not very mobile and not able to do all the acrobatic stuff of wrestling. But uh, at one point, he could do a lot of it. And uh, anyhow. I went to his house for about a month, was training with him uh, five days a week for about a month, and uh, he was showing me a lot of stuff. I got to meet uh, a couple of old school wrestlers come through there. I got to meet, I can't remember their names right now because I've been hitting the head too much, but uh, you know, and uh, I, I was actually going to do it, was training for it, was loving it, man. That joker picked me up and slammed the piss out of me, and it was like the coolest thing in the world, I thought, and um I'd, I'd gotten to where I was okay at it, and he was like, "Man, you're you're getting good fast. Like, we want to, uh, we I, I want to have you in a show. Let you be a heel, come in, and you know you can take a bump pretty good, which is where you fall." And uh, he said, "We'll bring you in there, have you in a full mask, full body suit, and let somebody beat the piss out of you." I was like, "Well, that sounds fun, I reckon." <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I, I was gonna do it, but then. Um, I got offered a professional boxing match for like 10 times what I was going to make in, in that wrestling show, 20 times what I was going to make in that wrestling show. So I was like, yeah, sorry, I got to go throw my hands again, bud. Oh, man. That's uh, you, I would you, love you, to see you that. Never know, you never know, bro. You, you, know, you, you, you could probably get connected with some of these, these bigger things and, and you know, you know, may, maybe get like on NXT and wind, wind up get, wind, wind up get, getting a chance to do something and get into the WWE. You never know. Bobo, man, it, it, it would I be want, awesome. I want you to knock out all of my heroes, man. I want you to be my new hero. <laughs> Come on. I want you to knock out Big Ben. I want you yes. to, uh, to That makes two of us at least. I want you to go in there. I want you to be the predator to Mark's hunt. All right. I want you. Dude, to look, hold on. You know how fun of a fight that would be. I know. <laughs> that would be a very Mark, fun Mark, fight. Mark Hunt and Bobo. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that would be amazing. After you get the knockout, I really hope to see you go in there and uh, call call for that because at this day and age, that's what. Uh, fighters need to do and you have the yeah, voice right. you, you have see, the persona uh, you, 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 are. See, you see Mike Perry calling this person out that person out yeah man, like, man I'm not real like Bobo Bobo is like a real dude you hell know? I was, you know, I punch time clock every day bud <laughs> every day um look so I got to thinking about it, man. You know, this whole little call out and what you're going to say when the interview you yeah, after you beat the piss out of Rothwell and all that jazz and everything and uh I don't know, man. There's some other little fella they had signed on here recently. I ain't heard of him having a fight, so might as well say his name while I'm in there. Who 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 are we referring to here, Steve? The the uh, old Hardy buddy. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Dan. 
no, no. Is is it Dan Hardy or Greg Hardy or oh, Greg Hardy? Yeah, he's oh, in the Greg yeah Hardy? he's in there now. The, the, yeah, the, the, the woman oh, beater used to be the Dallas Cowboy. Oh, that, that yeah, UFC and all that stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Carrie, yeah, that, Carrie right? Mm -hmm. That that's Carrie, right? You would love to see that. Oh, I'd love to see you fuck him up. Four hundred twenty percent. Didn't like when I signed him to UFC. I just don't like. I, apart from the fact that I I am. I, I love people and I just don't like what he does outside of sports. I, you know, I'm a woman's woman also, and it just, everything about him was terrible that they signed him in the beginning. It's personal pain. I Bobo, get it. I've, I've heard Bobo, stories. Can I ask you something though? I, Anything. I've been, I'm I've an been, open book. <laughs> I've been really guilty uh, throughout my life of a lot of, a lot of bad things I've done. Um, that I've gone to confession for, and I still need to go to confession for some new ones. Uh, is, is a man ever forgiven for, for hurting a woman in, in that way? And especially, are we able to seek forgiveness through violence like this? Uh, man, in this look case? here, a sincere, honest, uh, legit answer is uh, <laughs> the, only, the only thing I'm aware of that you cannot ask for forgiveness for and cannot be forgiven for is uh is suicide. Mm -hmm. uh, that that's that's the only thing that I'm aware of. Um, uh, as far as that goes, as far as I know, if if I'm wrong, somebody please correct me. But uh, as far as I know, um, the you can you can ask for forgiveness and truly want forgiveness truly seek forgiveness from any sin from anything that you've done in this life and receive that forgiveness um you uh but you have to truthfully heartfelt mean it truthfully heartfelt want that uh forgiveness when you ask for forgiveness when lord forgive me for my sins uh what you're saying is you're going to turn from your ways you understand that it's a sin uh, you're, you were asking for forgiveness for the sin to be forgiven for what you've done and that you're going to turn from that sin. Now, if I go around taking the Lord's name in vain every day, all day long, and every time I say it, Lord, forgive me, Lord, forgive me, and turn around and say it again, oh, Lord, forgive me. Well, how sincere is that asking for forgiveness? That, that's just like your spouse. You, uh, you go out and you cheat on your spouse. Oh, baby, I'm sorry, forgive me. And then... The next night, you go out and you cheat on your spouse. Come back, oh, baby, I'm sorry, forgive me. If, if you're really sorry, you're going to stop doing it. Yep. You I know? don't want to see the promo. I want to see the fight, right? It's so yeah. I don't want to see the actions, right? Right, 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 exactly. You know, I, I can I can ask for forgiveness for, you know, we as people, as humans, we can ask for forgiveness for anything. But if I just ask with my mouth and I don't show that I'm truly sorry and don't, show that I truly want to be forgiven with my actions, mm. then, man, all I'm doing is speaking dead words. So, Carrie, uh, you, you got anything right here to say on this subject? Uh, well, I actually do. <laughs> I, hope. Um, I, I do absolutely uh, agree with you. Uh, God does forgive all sins except for the one sin being um, suicide. That's the one sin you're not forgiven of. However... Um, you are absolutely right. Your actions, uh, who you are, the um, the fruit of your character, so to speak, um, is really what's forgiven. And, you know, you have a lot of people that like take that and they'll say, you know, they can ask for forgiveness, like you said, for everything. And uh, that's just you have to you have to bear good fruit. You have to be uh, a person of your word, not just want <coughs> of the forgiveness. And 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 essentially. And this is, I mean, just biblically what it says scripturally, Jesus died for our sins and we are so forgiven already um, down to murderers. Um, so it, it's really, would I love to see somebody have redemption and change and be a better person? Fuck yeah, I love that. I love a good comeback story. Does it happen often? Not often enough. Right, right. See, here, here's the main thing. You just hit on something that made me think about something. <laughs> it's like a, a tree. I've got a tree out back, and that tree spits out apples every year. Is an apple tree? It grows apples every year. 
I can call it an orange tree and tell you I've got an orange tree out there all day long. But if it's just growing apples and never grows an orange, guess what? I don't have an orange tree. Same thing with being a Christian. I can sit here and tell you I'm a Christian all day long. But if I never show the fruits of being a Christian, then guess what? That's not what I am. Right, so, Bobo, thank you so much, man. You had so many amazing quotes throughout this interview. An amazing story, along with some very laughable and yet very relatable uh, situations in your life, man. So thank you so much, man. This really brings us a lot closer to who you are as a person to make us really want to root for you to go in there and get that victory over Big Ben Rothwell coming up on October 1st with Hunt vs. Hero in Monroe, Louisiana. Bobo O'Bannon, uh, Ben Rothwell. Steve, what do you got here? Uh, I do it how, how we typically uh, roll this thing up, but, but we typically throw it over to you, man. Anyone you want to thank, anyone you want to sh want to shoot some love out to, your social media sites, any sponsors you may have, the time is yours, my friend. Man, look, I'm going to be honest with y'all. We've got a list of sponsors somewhere, and I don't have that list. And uh, <laughs> I don't have it memorized. This is probably the third time I've done, done this interview with Bobo, and he's done this every single time. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm just, like I said, I promise to you, I really am an idiot. It's not just the self-proclamation. It's true. <laughs> but, no, man, sincerely, speaking sincerely, I want to uh, – you know, ask for prayers for my wife and also want to give a shout out to my wife. You know, she's uh, been here and supported me every step of the way. She, uh, whenever we got married, she, uh, <laughs> I asked her to marry, <laughs> marry me. And the next day she wanted to know, was I done with fighting or was I going to fight ever again? And I'm like, you know, why? She said, because I'm not going to be married to a fighter. And well, guess I'm not fighting no more than babe. And uh, then it was laid on both of our hearts in separate times in church one day. And, um, you know, I kind of pushed it away and tried to ignore it. And then she come to me and said something to me about it. And so, I, you know, it's just meant to be. So I just want to, you know, give a shout out to my wife and thank her for supporting me every step of the way. You know, she makes sure my meal preps are done, make sure that my big goofy behind knows when the interviews are. And, you know, she, she keeps me on track, man, and uh, uh, gets the uh, helps with sponsors. Uh, we've also now we've got Vince Anderson on the uh, management team. Uh, you know, they started a whole new management company and he's helping with sponsors and helping take some of the headache off her with other things. And, you know, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm thankful, man. I've got a good team in my corner here. I've got, you know, like I say, at least two great people, my wife and Vince. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm very blessed. I'm, I'm blessed that, you know, even have the opportunity and the help. For my big goofy behind to still get in the ring and do this thing, man. What a uh, success well, story from Plenty of Fish, though. Come on, <laughs> come on, come on. Well, well, belly either way, Bo. You know, you know, you know. We always wish you the best of skill, man. Hopefully, you, you get out there. You, you you get that big win you 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 were asking for. You were looking for. And, and you, you get to the next big fight, and, and you know, hopefully, we get we get we get, they can deliver the wish. You can get over the pond. You can get get to you can you can get over to the UK, so you can actually have your you know your your oh, coach yeah. there in your corner. I, I, and I, I think if you do get that wish, you'll probably fly out there early. If I if I won't be mistaken, right? Come on, uh, I'm <laughs> sure hoping so. I'm sure hoping at least a couple of weeks early to train with coach for a bit, maybe. All right, but. Oh. Um, Look, Rick, the time. David Lane, who who made these? <laughs> See, this is him asking. Look, I'm, I'm sorry. Who, who do I got to give some love? I, I just, my shirt, man. Uh, somebody made me the shirt. And, you know, it's got the little Jesus on the back. I don't know if you can see it there or not. I'm my goofy yeah, behind trying to show you stuff. Welcome to my house. Yeah, welcome to my house from, you know, uh, <laughs> New Breed and Jesse Harrod walking out with me, you know. And got the John three sixteen on it. Got the cross, little bloods, blood splatter there. You know, got the bare knuckle there. So you know, give a big shout out to them for making it for me, Jamie Worman, I think it was. <coughs> but yeah, look, thank y'all, thank y'all for having me on. Uh, I hope I ain't too good. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> hope I at least made a halfway decent show. Thanks for your time. 
we'll we'll definitely do this again in, uh, uh, for the next one, my friend. Yes, sir. Y'all have a blessed one. John three three sixteen. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look that up right now. So thank you. Come on. All right, bro. Love you, brother. All right. All right, All right guys. Everyone. That 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 was BKFC heavyweight. Bobo O'Bannon, he's always he he did he's a character. I, I love him. He's he's you know he's you know he I is like the, 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 the big the the big the big silent southern boy that it, that if it, it, you push him right you you, you gonna you gonna go get one honorary some some bitch. That's what you that, that 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 that's what it is. He he's just he's he he's he's definitely a, a unique guy. Uh, you know you know uh de definitely real where where his uh. You know, his wife's been going through a lot of things. Like when he tells you, like she is like every other disease under the sun. That's he doesn't. He, he he's exaggerating to a point, but he's not really exaggerating, which is the kind of the sadder part. So he does like like a lot of the stuff. Like you know, you know, she she's always there, screaming, hollering, jumping around like a crazy person, <laughs> get, getting getting her heart rate way past the way it needs to be. And that's why you know, you know, he does he does bring in a guy like like Vince Anderson to to, to kind of help. You know, make make the the managerial side side of of fighting a little bit easier because she was basically been doing it the last handful of years all all on herself. So, Steve, you know. what would you do if you're in there with him and you dropped your quarter? I mean, come on, who's fighting? Who wins the fight for the quarter in there? Come on, listen, you just got you just got to th th throw the heel up, dude. End it real quick. You know what's special about our show that separates us from everyone else? Oh, what's that, Barry? brother? That we get these fighters to actually open up and feel comfortable enough to share these really intimate type of stories with us. Uh, Steve and Carrie, you, you guys being such legends in the game, and then me being a little gremlin behind the keyboard, <laughs> just throwing stuff out. Like, I don't know what's going on here, but we get like crazy stuff happening here. It's it's a, it's, uh, all, it's always fun when, when, when we get get the uh man listen not not the other beat like last week with uh, with, 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 with killer Karunas and 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 her her her, her manager Carrie you missed it I uh, know Carrie I was in a pool tournament they told me now you fight a dick. that's what happened last yeah you go pow 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 I was fucking dying like this Carrie now you fight a dick yeah oh <laughs> when what. She, she was serious too because we were talking about fighting right mm -hmm. and you know waiting to relieve yourself sexually um before or after and waiting till after and she was like my coach tell me now you fight a dick <laughs> after the fight and we were whoa we were totally thrown off by that we couldn't believe what 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 happened man I love it. Uh, uh let's let's uh let's talk a little bit about what you were doing carrie what were you up to Oh, I was actually going to uh, quickly quote John three sixteen for you. Oh, okay, awesome. Oh yeah, that's uh, for God so gave so God for God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, who uh, who shall shall whoever believes in Him shall not perish but shall have eternal life. Wow. Yeah, mine's eight twelve. That's my. Favorite. Oh, you have one. We actually have Helen calling in. So how how about that, Carrie? Why don't you lead us in with this? Are you comfortable with that here? We got Helen Peralta calling in from Invicta FC as a flyweight. And she's slated to return September 28th. First, uh, Polina Bethello, uh, if you guys can stumble over that, after yeah. last season on Ultimate Fighter. Carrie, why don't we lead you in here? All right. What's up, Helen? What up? We got you on the night. Showtime. Well, <laughs> DB and Helen, how are you doing tonight? I'm good. Uh, a little worn out, but um, expected. I had two sparring sessions today. So there was seven rounds this morning, and then eight more rounds this afternoon. It's like Shark Tank style this afternoon. And um, yeah. <laughs> I got to ask you something it. right off the rip, though. Is there a sign yet over the gym? Or we, we got no sign yet? Is there a sign over the gym? Uh, the one in Fairfield? Uh, yeah, over no. at uh, Ground Zero. No, there's no sign yet. I, you yeah, just really? To, no sign. It's like Fight Club. You need to know where you're going. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So obviously everyone here knows who you are. You really don't got to introduce yourself. We don't need any big warm-ups. I mean, you are such a star. Do you even realize it yet? Or do you are you really not uh, aware of it? Does this season of Ultimate Fighter not even seem like 
you know, 10 years ago, if I was on Ultimate Fighter, man, if I was on that season with Ronda, does it not even seem real yet? Do you, does it seem like there's so much more? You've barely even scratched it. How, how are you feeling right now? What's going on? I don't really feel like a superstar, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I feel like I'm a starving artist. Uh, the Ultimate Fighter, I mean, it's all right. Um, they really fell short when it came to the editing. I think they did a terrible job. They kind of made it one of my least favorite seasons of The Ultimate Fighter. Even though I'm in it, I had to skip some of it because I, it looked like they hired someone last minute and gave them all those hours and hours of footage and they just, just picked up whatever. I'm because sorry, I'm, I'm telling sorry. you, it was it was not boring in the house. Whoever edited it is, is an idiot. I'm I mean, so they, happy. For they left out anything that was worth watching. I was falling asleep to some of it. I was like, oh my God, I, I can't. And then, you know, I, I always had the hope. I'm like, maybe they're going to put this here. Maybe they're going to put this there. They didn't follow like the timeline. They were just putting things wherever they wanted. So some things were completely out of context. And it's like, what, what are you talking about? Yeah, I'm getting drunk after after you already told me I lost a fight that I won. And at the end of the show, and then you're switching it. I'm putting it at the beginning to make it look like I'm doing that straight from the go. When it's not true. I cut way for fights I didn't have as backup. They didn't even show that. Because at least it would have let promoters know that I was there to fight. I mean, there were so many TV worthy moments in the house and they just left it out. It was uh, it was very weird. I mean, I know the uh, ESPN is owned by Disney uh, and they have to sanitize it a little bit. But it was it, it was they butchered that season. It was horrible. It was really so, bad. What, 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 what one was... of the reasons why a lot of people have been turned off for tough is because of the editing where, where you're not the only person that's been saying that over the past handful of seasons that, that the editing has been bad. They haven't really been actually showing some of the stuff that's been going on in the house that actually is why a lot of people are kind of tuning out where I also feel that why Dane has been kind of pushing these contender series more is because I think he's trying to phase out tough. That's just my personal opinion. I think oh, no, he's right. contractually obligated to still do tough right now, but he's trying to end it. Yeah, That's I think he's opinion. like emotionally invested because tough did save the UFC at one point, but Dana was not happy with them either. You know, they were not happy with our conditions in the house. It was it was the most boring house I ever seen. I could have stayed at an Airbnb. Wow. I had a better time. You know, there was nothing glamorous about that house. It was boring as fuck. There was, nothing was hot. The bathtub wasn't hot. The sauna wasn't hot. The, the pool we were using as cold plunges. You know, like we had nothing, no recovery, no access to the, the Performance Institute, no access to anything. I mean, it was, it was crazy. The very last day, Diana found out they, even, they didn't even heat up the pool for us. Wow. And he was like, wow, guys, you suck. I'm like, this might be your last <laughs> season. And I was like, yeah, Dana, like, seriously, <laughs> what the fuck? You, you know what's crazy about all of this? You just mentioned you feel like a starving artist, right? Do you know how many people out there that are in my shoes, Steve's shoes, Carrie's shoes, that would love an opportunity to be able to edit and show the world the magic inside mixed martial, especially for the females and your guys' stories individually? I mean, what's one of the biggest things they missed about you on this season of The Ultimate Fighter? I, they missed that. They they literally edited me out. I mean, I'm surprised I'm still listed as one of the participants when you Google it. I mean, I taught so many cooking classes in that house, like so many <laughs> cooking classes. I taught people how to cook all sorts of things, all sorts of different recipes. I even cooked for uh, Amanda Nunes on her coaches. I made wow. some tacos. We had we watched fights live. I had a lot of little uh, conversations in the back. We call the confessions where I will like call out the fights. I didn't miss one fight. I got all the fights right. Who was going to win and why? They left that out. They left a lot of like really good uh, conversations between the fighters in the house. Some dramatic, some that will add some, uh, you know, like TV worth watching, you know, because this is not like that. We have the contenders for the fight. This is not about the fight. It's supposed to be about the personality of the participants. It's supposed to be raw, but they edited, they put things here and there, whatever they wanted. They did not follow the, the, the timeline the way it was supposed to be. I was getting drunk in the last week because I was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> and they put that at the beginning, like I just showed up there and just started getting drunk. We snap the fucking case, you know. You're like here's Helen, dude. It's yeah. like I work my ass off, and nobody works harder than me. And that's how you're gonna portray me. And not only that, why do you leave out all the other stuff, all like the good stuff? I even poured like the guys how to, uh, taught them how to pour wine, you know, which is like different from fighting. But that was the whole reason why I put myself in that situation. <laughs> why the fuck would I want to be in a house with all these fighters? You know, why would I want to do that? Like, be away from They have people in my personal space. I didn't do it for the fight. I can get a fight anytime. I did it because I wanted people to see another part of my personality. And I, and I 
usually I keep to myself, but I purposely let it out a little bit more just for the for the TV because it's supposed to, you know, I was doing my job, I thought, and it was a waste of time and energy because they edited it all out. Yeah, I got censored gonna... from the moment I walk out to the weigh-ins, I got censored. I have to redo my own weigh-ins. It's like, what the fuck, dude? Whoa, 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 whoa. Rewind. Rewind. Steve, you get, Carrie, you getting the same reaction? What do you mean? You had to redo? The way that's that's really weird. That's like uh, Kim Kardashian have to redo her birth uh, reaction. <laughs> you know, like yeah. Come on, I had to redo my way in to make it more uh, Disney friendly or whatever the fuck their their <laughs> idea was. There was nothing wrong with it. Like there was no hot water in the house, and I always come out with my oh. fight shorts and 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 a bra like a fighter. I don't go out there in lingerie. It's not my personality, and I, I portray myself as a fighter. Well, I had dinner the night before because I don't cut weight for 125 and I woke up half a pound over. So I'm like, oh, I go turn on the hot water and the hot water is not hot. The bathtub is not working. The sauna is not working. So oh, hell, way- hell, you're just complaining now. You, you're from Iowa. You love cold water. I, <laughs> but I, I needed to do that. Sometimes you need, yeah, at some point in time, you're going to need hot water when you're right. in the middle of the, of, of the fight situation. When you're trying I had to, to cut, cut weight, half a pound. Recover, et cetera. Yeah. So I yeah. couldn't cut the half a pound. So I came out and I realized my bra weighed half a pound. So I put tape over yeah. my nipples and I came out to the weigh in. Because I needed to make weight, and then they made me redo the whole thing. But I had the same amount of covering that my opponent had, which is this girls always wear this tiny little bra that barely cover their boobs. So I did <laughs> the same with, with tape, and then they censored me, and they had me do the weigh-in again. That, that's absolutely rough. Coming out in an experience where you should feel like, oh my, oh my God, this is my moment. Like if ESPN contacted me or like, we're going through journalists to be the next to be a commentator on Invicta FC with TJ DeSantis, I'd be like, oh my, all excited. And then uh, they, they cut me out because uh, this and that. Man, I, I, w- I would feel so hurt about that. But that isn't really your case, Helen, because you're such a bigger star than what the ultimate fighter really had to present to you. I feel Carrie and Steve, do you agree with me here that uh she's she's bigger than uh what the ultimate fighter really had to give to her. I I knew her way before. Well, I mean, at the, at the same fighter. point in time that that's why she she went out for the seasons is for the benefits that to, for, of for being on the ultimate fighter. I she, wasted she, half a year, then they wouldn't let me fight and I even won that contract. The 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 contract for Tough is the worst contract in the UFC. It does not have an out clause, and I'm so glad I'm not in it. Like some people, like fifteen and fifteen. It's oh, it's way less than that, and it's not even the money. It's like there's not a date, an end date, like all the new contracts have. Mm. And I'm very good with contracts. So when I saw they made, I thought they would make you sign the contract at the end of the show. They make you sign the contract at the beginning of the show in case you win. So you're already tied up. And even if coming in as the loser of the Ultimate Fighter, it's the contract is even worse. So when some people are like, you should be in the UFC, I'm like, dude, I dodge a bullet. I will be in the UFC. It's just not through that fucking contract. And I'm so glad that I'm not. That was not in the finale. It, it all worked itself out. I just felt like I lost some time where I couldn't be fighting. Because even after the season was over, we would finish filming. I could not Yeah, compete. yeah. You're, you're, you're through the contract. You cannot fight until after the finale airs. A lot yes. of people don't know that. Yeah, wow. Which you actually do it's have an upcoming things, fight. He's right. Why a lot of people they, they don't want to go through the Ultimate Fighter if you're if you're going to try to get to the UFC. Everyone would either would rather just get signed straight up or go go through the Contender Series for the because for the most part, like it's not the it's not the same. Oh, okay, you, you, can ha- you can have your manager like negotiate a contract at that point in time. Yeah, and not only that, like you t- coming into the UFC anywhere that's not the ultimate fighter, you're coming in with a better contract. That's you know, I knew that going in. I just thought that I will I will only have to sign the contract if I won, and I thought I was gonna be the only fighter to win the ultimate fighter and not sign the contract. But I didn't know they make you sign right away, and I didn't win the show, so it is what it is. Uh, but I don't, I, I don't see as what people think it was. Just, oh, this is amazing. You're in the Ultimate Fighter. I'm like, no, dude, you know what's amazing? I'm Helen fucking Peralta. That's yeah. amazing. The <laughs> Ultimate Fighter can and, fuck and, off. And, 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 you, and you're sitting there say, saying, like, like you, you, you kind of feel like you, like you got that chip on your shoulder. You're a little disrespected right, right now and, and things of that nature. Now, I, you know, as we were doing the intro, you know, I, you know I, 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 I was looking back. Like, you're the last person to also beat Christine Ferreira, who's kind of, kind of be the 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 queen of bkfc right now 
if you know she's looking for bigger fights, is that something you 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 would entertain taking a step away from MMA at the point in time, or do you want to concentrate on MMA and see where this is going to go for right now? I'm not the last person to beat Christine. I'm the only person to beat Christine in bare knuckle. But it's like a, a huge differentiation. And yes, I did make it clear. I commented. I let them know I wanted to do it. I know they're all about abuse and you know flashing tits after and all this WWE <laughs> stuff. I don't know how to do any of that stuff, but I can fight. So if they want, if they want a real fight between give the champion a real challenge, I'm open for it. I think uh, I want to do it as a fan mostly because I love the first fight so much. And I also feel like Christine has grown so much and she's so much better now. I think she deserves the opportunity to show the world that she's the best. So if, by putting together a rematch, you're not only to satisfy me as a, as a fan or the fan that want to see the fight, you're also showing respect for your champion by mm -hmm. giving her the opportunity to get that back, to get yeah. that one back. It was a close fight and I think she deserves a rematch. I, I agree. I, th I think that, that, that you guys should be able to run that back. Um, I agree that also with the fact that, that, that they're, they're kind of going in a different direction with their women's division, even, even with who they've matched her up with uh, over the past handful of times, N nothing against Britain. We, we already know that she was fighting above her weight class at that point in time. And, 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 uh, I, I don't know why Taylor Starling was in there. I, I think that 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 thing just got a lot of followers. I think that whole thing was manufactured. <laughs> the the her, her taking her belt, the whole thing it was it, it felt forced to me. I, I, nothing nothing against Taylor or anything like that. It just felt like they were forcing that entire situation on us. That entire fight, everything. It was orchestrated. They literally put the cameras in place. You call the friend. To make this happen because people like that WWE bullshit and you know what this is space for it and if it makes money it makes sense you can have your little charade going on but oh, have man. the real fights too you know i actually love watching these girls that have no skills that come out there half naked love them you know violence and sex together it's my it's totally my jam i'm all pro it i'll like all of their pictures and videos and whatever and i'll follow their page yeah i'm definitely part of the problem in that case we found their new nickname <laughs> <laughs> I'm, part, I'm part of the problem i know this but we also deserve to have real fights you know real competition you know all these promoters they want to promote boobs and nice bodies that's lazy you're trying to promote something that can promote itself how about yeah. you promote the fighters that need promoting? Carrie? She's a thought. No, she's absolutely right. I mean, everybody. Nail on the head, like everyone. Those are boobs. Yeah, and they... Let's put these nails out. <laughs> They're there. Yeah. Like, Carrie, thoughts? Everybody wants to see that, and you guys deserve that. You deserve real fights. And I mean, everybody that you've beat in the past, your past opponents, you've beaten some amazing people uh one of my personal friends uh jennifer chiang you you uh really beat her up pretty bad it was a great fight for you. <laughs> congratulations on that uh, and uh it's, i'm just excited to see you in there i can't wait to see you fight again oh my god i can't wait to get in the uh to shake this off finally get rid of that ultimate fighter curse where they even let me fight for half a year and, and you know what like i was healthy like i haven't been healthy for so long so being healthy all this time training all this top gym putting in all that work and not being able to compete was killing me like to me going to the gym is not to be like further my career and get better it's mental health too i need to be in there i cannot not have a fight line up i, I lose my shit, you know <laughs> so not being able to to compete and do what i what i love to do was really getting to me mentally and physically because once your mind starts to go you're physically tired all the time you're in a bad mood you start feeling sick even when you're not the moment I signed that contract, it was just like, fuck yeah, now I feel good. I did 15 rounds today. They, I don't have any female wow. partners. You know, I did seven rounds this morning with a very high level of striker. I have some wrestling too, but mostly because of the striking. And then tonight, I did eight round shark tank style of just like MMA grappling. So you have the MMA glove, you do a little bit of ground and pound. Obviously, you don't go 100%, but look at my fucking face. <laughs> I mean, I, I caught some shots. I'm like, I'm all beat up, but I'm happy. You know, I love this life. And I want to be able to do what I love to do. I just love to fight. So now, now I got to ask you though: Were you surprised by by the result of, uh, of the pay per view after the, the for the coaches uh, after the Ultimate Fighter that that uh, Amanda was basically be able to play with her food, so to speak, and and and, and put a little beating on on Juliana Pena? Was that surprising to you? 
I want to say it was surprising uh, that Amanda won. I mean, there's a reason why she's been the champion, dominant champion for so long. And when you put the two best in the world, you cannot be surprised when it goes either way. You know, if I go out there and I fight Christina again and I knock her out in the first, you cannot be surprised. She knocks me out in the first. You shouldn't be surprised. We go, this is another word. It's hard, you know, it's hard to like really uh, guess that kind of a fight. So I wasn't surprised, you know. I was a little, you know, emotional because I spent so many weeks working with Juliana and I knew she could have done more than what happened, you know, but there's other things, which with every fighter, there's always so many other things behind the scene that had nothing to do with the fight itself. And on that, you know, that that's my uh, name. I gotta ask you, yeah. is, her, is, is her, her daughter uh, uh, standing behind her our way and staring Oh, my God. Not, not the greatest photo. <laughs> oh, it was great. History. It was great because it was a little video. You can tell she got intimidated at one point. She took a deep breath. And then she was like, no, 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 no. She went right back to staring down Amanda fucking Nunes. I mean, that little girl is a beast. <laughs> She's a well, beast. See, the reason why I ask is because apparently lately it's been taboo since, you know, U Usman fight that that they, that that they people are saying some of these champions need to start leaving their, their children. I agree. Home. I agree. Uh, I don't think you should bring your weaknesses to war. That's how I feel. But everybody has their own ritual, and I would have never had an opinion on that. I never voiced it. Because she has her ritual. She, her daughter was there when she won the title. And she's always been there. But I don't think if somebody that you have people that you care about, they can do two things. They're either your strength or they're your weaknesses. And if they're your weaknesses, you don't bring them with you to war. Why would you bring weaknesses to war? That makes no sense to me. But that's just how I feel. I hear you. Like, like, I, like I said, like it, it's one of the things that's kind of like become become a topic to talk about and, and things of that nature. Like, I agree. Like, if it's a part of your routine, then it's something you should do. But if it's one of these things where 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 it's like 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 you said, like not not even just a weakness, but like something that 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 could take away from what you're trying to do, something that mm -hmm. you have to deal with outside side of what you're trying to get in there to go and do, then you sh he or she should should be left at home. Just so it's something you have, you, you don't really have to have to deal with because because a, a lot of stuff has to go on during fight week to everything to go right for you got for 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 you athletes to perform the way you need to in the cage. Or Absolutely, ring. and it doesn't have to be your kid. It could be your mom. It could be your girlfriend. It could be your wife. If there's that part of you that you know that's your weakness, don't bring it with you to war. It just doesn't make any sense because now you're not just fencing up for yourself. Now you're also trying to protect someone else. And it's easier when you only have to worry about yourself. So, you know, we, we can talk after the fight. We can meet after the fight. But when I go in there, I'm going to work. I, I'll talk to you when, I, when I'm done with work, like we do, like most people do in their regular life. You don't bring your kids to work, whatever your job is. You meet them afterwards, you know. it's just, Especially when it's something like this. Obviously, we want to go there and not take a shot and end the fight in five seconds and highlight real in, in our favor. But that's not always the case, not at this level, you know. And... It's just, it, I don't know. For me, I never done that. I'd be, I've gone through fights where it's just me and my coach, most of them. And people watch when they want to watch. I had had a few matches where I had people come in to watch, but it's not my priority. Like, I don't care who shows up. I got to show up. Mm. Little known fact, uh, do you show up all the time when hula hooping? Because I know you're the baddest blue belt on the planet, but are you really the hula hoop champ is what oh, we want to know. Oh, I, I am. I'm am willing to test that title against anybody. We got to see this, though. Like, I really do want to set up a competition with, <laughs> with with female and male fighters with hula hooping, man. Like, that's that's pretty even even with the um, what is it? The uh, the reflex ball. You're, you're insane at that. I, I saw you work in that reflex ball. I mean, I try to do that. I just it's it's uh, it, it's flashbacks of my ex-girlfriend. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not I'm not that good at it. But <laughs> it's oh man. I mean, now, uh, now, 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 like, now Helen, I, I got yeah, we had get had gotten asked this earlier. Anderson Silva, Jake Paul finally got announced. Do you think it's a work or do you think Anderson's gonna be able to 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 to, to just absolutely blow through this kid uh, October or uh, 29th down there in Arizona? I think um I love uh the spider, of course. I think Jake Paul wins, whether it's a work or not. I think this is just an exhibition fight, guys. This is not like a real fight. It's an exhibition match. People are there just for, you know, for people with money are there to watch this novelty thing that wouldn't other have otherwise happen if it wasn't because there was money. Because it doesn't really make sense in any way, shape, or form. But uh, uh, Paul needs to win that fight in order for this, his train to keep going. 
And I know how Anderson Silva feels about fighter paid and fighter having more options. So, you know, I know he wouldn't throw a fight on purpose, but he would definitely do it for the better of the fighters who mm. have now more option because of Jake Paul. I know most people, I don't watch, like, I don't care. I don't know what kind of YouTube thing he does, but I think it's good for the sport. Anytime that you have competition, it's good for anything you're doing. Because right now we have a monopoly and we need yeah. to break away from that. And that goes to what my poll question was. Nate Diaz was without a doubt the biggest winner last weekend. The MMA May gods uh, saw it fit to kind of rewrite uh, uh, what was what was inevitably about to be written, and just kind of threw all the chips in his bag. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty amazing. I mean, I know it's really hard to coordinate so many people to be able to to um, have a work. I mean, like, how do you have a work without all the people knowing you're doing this? And when you're an entity like the UFC it will be hard to explain because eventually the problem with people is that they always have to open their fucking mouths. One person tells another person, tells another person, tells another person. So I don't think it was a work, but I do think it was manipulated. Mm. I don't think it was a work where you call people in and give money. No, it wasn't like that because I wouldn't take that risk if I was in charge of something so big. I know better. I know people. People suck. They don't know how to keep secrets. <laughs> they don't know how to keep secrets. You but ain't I can manipulate it. I've been you a can manipulate it myself. <laughs> <laughs> you are. I don't, I don't think it was a work, but I, but like I said, I think I think when it got to a certain point, like like oh, it was they, manipulated. I think they knew. I think they they they, they knew they knew Shumanov was was going to be over and was like, you know what, dude, just don't let, let's let's just do this a different way. It was not going to look good for the UFC. And then they finally realized, like, yeah, we were mad at, at him when we gave him that fight. You know, like, we won. And, and it makes sense from the business point of view. You do don't want your asset to leave him with more value to go compete against you. You want yeah. to well, devalue and them. And exactly. Compete against you because he's opening a promotion, one, two, that, that he's go, that he's either going to go to another rival promotion or, mm -hmm. or somebody that, that, that is going to pull views. And arguably, you, you could sit there and say, oh, over the last 10 years, he's probably been their, their most consistent draw over that, that period of time, win, lose, or draw. Absolutely. He's a, it's a big start, you know, because he's never he was never changed by the UFC and the circumstances. He was always being himself. And that is a huge scarcity of personality out there. Most people are a reflection of their fucking environment. And it's yeah. insane to watch because everybody's the same. Everybody does the same thing. They like the same thing. They care the same thing. <laughs> Boom, it's driving me insane, dude. And then you have a very few number of people who are themselves all the time and they don't care who likes them and who doesn't like them. Eventually he became like, but before people just thought he was a, a, a what is it, a pothead that couldn't make, put a sentence together, right? That's what people were saying when he was about to fight Conor McGregor. And then when he finally got that win, that everything, everything flipped. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely insane that this is the world we're in. Jake Paul versus Anderson Silva. I like that you're you're in tune with all of that. Were people in the house like like what were you realizing about people in the in the fighter house? Were they up to date with a lot of this stuff, or were they kind of detached from a lot of the stuff going on in the combat sports scene? I kind of zoomed them out most of the time, you know, because there was like there was not many intelligent conversations going on. And there was a few people that were trying because they knew it was going to go on TV. They were trying so hard to, to portray a personality on TV that I, I couldn't bother talking to them, you know? I'll yeah. be in the kitchen, you know, keeping myself busy, making different stuff. Somebody asked me something, I'll do a little cooking class, like show them people how to do stuff. I'll bring them into my world, but I try not to go into theirs because their world was fucking boring. Mm. So, like, if you came to talk to me, I'll bring you into my world, like, with my kind of conversation. But I... I always try to avoid just kind of going going into their world and have to deal with you know with what's going on in their head, just kind of stay in my own head in a way, but without making it public. Just like anybody that approaches me, I bring them into my framework. See, why can't we we see like all the footage of you cooking and like like what's one what's one thing that you wish they released from the Ultimate Fighter uh, that maybe we can even get them to release. Definitely some of those cooking classes, like, because it was like, you gotta see that. Come on. I mean, right? it, I, I, first of all, I'm a very amazing cook, but also I wanted people to see a part of me that didn't, that wasn't me hurting people. It was me nourishing people. So it was like the yeah. opposite of fighting. So that was something that I really wanted out there. And then I had a few rants, you know, about how most jujitsu coaches always fuck their students, even if they're underage. Oh! And they, they censor that immediately, but I think they should have put it out there. They probably know a lot of jujitsu coaches that are their fucking friends. 
But Sorry. I felt like that needed to be out there, and they it's cut that out. Taboo thing, but Helen, oh my God, you're so right. <laughs> I've heard this from so many female fighters. Hel Hel you see it everywhere. Look at how many fighters are dating their coach or whatever, and it's it's. Mm -hmm. I've never, I did. I didn't expect to see anything like that. But let me tell you something. I almost got sued for this. I'm actually. shocked that the shit that I've seen. So you're right. <laughs> there, there is so much of that. I remember this. So there were some I games. Mean, that if I notice I, anything I got, here, I, I will let nothing, them know. I got nothing but love for him, but 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 no, no one talks about Pat and Rose. I I was. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I love the both of them. Don't get me wrong. But nobody talks about it. It's, it's like it's, that. It's, that is a hostage dude. situation. <laughs> That's I'm sorry. I see it. It's a yes. hostage fucking situation. Oh my God. I'm hoping to see the sign that says "Help me" in one of those videos, like just in a corner. You know, like you have to really dig in oh to God. find it. <laughs> Helen. <laughs> Helen, 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 Helen! Fire me! I don't care. C Carrie, what are you saying, Carrie? Does you have Stockholm syndrome where you become in love with your captor? Yep. That one. Like I mean, really, because she... when you look at their relationship and how young, I mean, it's. It's a little like you kind of got to step back and go, whoa, you know, and, and especially and, when you hear how it started, like in normal it's, world, people like look at that and it's frowned upon, you know what I mean? So it's, it's a touchy, it's very, very touchy. And when you see young girls in gyms and they're, you know, it's young mm -hmm. girls are in general. Um, and then you get your coach or, you know, who could tend to, you see a lot of people that are grooming, is grooming is groomer. Yeah. I don't know the word to mm -hmm. say. There yeah, are females that are like that too. I've seen females that are are fucking, you know, in my personal opinion, I'm like, yo, you got a couple screws loose. Um, but that's in everything, you know, and, and it's up to us, in my personal opinion, to educate people on that, especially as, as women and, and to it, Yeah, no, in martial arts, I feel like you should be called out on it. And yep. to so many jujitsu coaches are always fucking girls that are underage in their class. Ooh, and yep. that's just not good. It's not, I see it all the time. And I, I always have this rule. I have never dated, and I can say this clearly. I have absolutely never dated anybody I train with ever. Because to me, that's my like my special place, and I try to keep it away. But I've seen it. And it, it makes sense that you spend too much time with someone, you might like them. But for someone in a position of coach, you're supposed to be a fucking mentor. Mm -hmm. To go around and be screwing these little girls that you know you're not going to get in with. And you know how, how these young girls are. They might be really passionate about jujitsu, and then they, you break their heart, and that's it. They're never training again. They go off the rail. They, you know, like it completely changes their life. Yeah, with you ruin their sanctuary that they came there to, to kind oh, of yes. help be the yes. build, build confidence up for for something or, or oh, give, dude, protect what? themselves. That could be a girl's safe space. We, you know, that's what I'm saying. Or they're going to get uh, nourished, like you were saying, mentally, emotionally, physically. They're learning. You know, and there's so much, and you're learning a team aspect. You're there's so much that you're supposed to learn doing mixed martial arts that is screwing around with your coaches or your coach screwing around with your stu a student is just that's like the the number one. No, you're not supposed to. It's 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 no. Art. As a coach, like I can see, like people like other people who are in a position of power. So the moment I sense that, I immediately shut it down. But you're a fucking mentor. You're telling me you have another place to put your fucking dick, dude? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seriously? Like, are you kidding me? It just blows my mind that they will even cross that line. To me, that's huge. And so I did have a few rants in the house about that. And, you know, I, I, and I put up some examples. They probably have a lot of friends who do that, all these fucking pedophiles out there. And they censor the whole thing. So it's like, whatever. Helen, you know, I, oh, I... Carrie, go, please. Really quick, I, I, I really love that we're bringing this up because it's... Me too. It's important. No, it's really, really important. I was at a fight and uh, a friend of mine who runs the fight organization or doesn't anymore, uh, his daughter was there and, you know, <laughs> there was a coach that walked past and said something where his wife was like, you know what, we're not bringing her anymore. Um, you can't trust any guys. You don't know who they are, number one. You, you really don't know them. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, he had the gall to do that? Like, to, to, to flirt with your daughter in front of your wife. I'm like, dude, he's not, that's not a um, creepy guy. That's a pedophile. And Absolutely. Pull it out for what it is. I'm like, no, that's a fucking pedophile. I'm sorry. Like, the, especially the person's record. Um, I, I know the ages of girls that he's been with and I could confidently say, you know, that's fucked yeah, up. How weird, how weird. And the, the people need to be called out for it. I'm sorry. Especially There's so many people in power that they, they enable each other because it's a bunch yeah. of pedophiles and nobody fucking talks about it.
But hey, if you come up with tape, we're gonna fucking censor you. Fuck you, Disney. Here, here's here's the thing I want I want to I want to say, and I've I've witnessed uh, a, a lot of girls feel like they were the cause of the situation that occurred, and are afraid to come forth with uh, bringing it to light in fear of thinking that they're wrong. Helen, how would you approach the situation if somebody approached you and uh, with with the situation? Uh, what would what would be your words of guidance to somebody in this sad situation? The first thing I would do, I would let the girl know that what they're feeling is exactly how they're supposed to be. Their brain is not developed enough to know that they are being preyed by someone else. And then I would show them examples. And the reason why it doesn't get reported is because, yeah, you feel like you did something wrong, right? That Oh, Helen, are you still there? Well, I think she froze a little bit. Frozen uh, in in the middle of a very important one. Uh huh. Like, great time to. Terry, what, what what would you say? Uh, what, oh, what, what, I, what, I would Helen? absolutely say, and, and piggybacking off of Helen, you know, your feelings are absolutely correct. You are supposed to one, however you're feeling about it, speak about it. Don't sit there and internalize it. That's the worst thing you can do. Um. All you are is is in your own head. So you know. Oh, yeah, wait, here she's. I would, so she's good now. You know anything. Say what? Oh, yeah. uh, let me let me uh, say say this one more time, Helen. If, if somebody approached you uh, in in a situation where they were at a gym and their coach or somebody there was making them feel very uncomfortable, how would you go about uh, talking to them about this? Uh, what, what would be your way? of going about handling this kind of a situation that happens way too often? Oh, I think you should come in with honesty. The first thing I will let them know is that they're feeling exactly what they're supposed to be feeling. And the reason why that person that was supposed to be a mentor was able to take advantage of them is because they have a blueprint. It's not the first time they do it. And everybody at their age will feel like it's, you are gonna feel like it's your fault because you don't know any better. This person didn't know that you were going to feel that way, and that's why they took advantage of you. And then I will show them other examples and why it happens. Just straight up. I'm not going to hold your hand and try to explain to you. And yeah, this happened to you, but it doesn't have to define you. What we're going to do for now is just get rid of the problem, and that's not you. The problem is this asshole pedophile on this side. Mm -hmm. You didn't do anything wrong. Exactly. Um, uh, just one last question on this subject. Um, if this is going on in a gym... It, it, do you guys know of anywhere that people can even reach out uh, for something yeah, like that's this? What I think this is an ongoing I, issue. It's be something done as somewhere has somewhere where someone can talk to somebody so, like that. The, There's, I, I feel like the problem that uh, girls don't go and always report it, um, and they may be shamed into by mm -hmm. their um, attacker or whatever you want to call him, uh, is because one. It, it, the prosecutors, if that goes to court, will railroad the fuck out of that girl, no matter what, it doesn't matter. And they literally will dig up anything they can. And it's terrible what they Ugh. do. They re-victimize victims all the fucking time. More, more often than not, girls are so terrified because they don't want, what if they like sent their boyfriend a picture? You know, they don't want that shit coming out there. Yep. There's many variables that uh, they will tell you, the perpetrator, um, and even sometimes the cops will tell you this is gonna come out in court, all of it. And it's like, it, wh why make it? Why make a victim feel worse one than they already do? Two, we need a better system. We need a way better system where girls should feel that they can. And maybe you know, reach maybe the the, the reach out to women, reach out to another woman, reach out to somebody that you know you know is um, older than you, maybe somebody that's a little bit more powerful than you, whatever. If it's not your mom, someone. It's always easier to talk to a girl if you're a girl. I, I, it just really is. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not just girls. Like, I, literally, our country and most countries are run by fucking pedophiles. There's, I mean, the problem is so much bigger. Well, you, the only thing you can do is just prevent your kids from becoming victims by forming them, by giving them the real life. Don't hold their freaking hands and try to, like, mm -hmm. give them a code. You tell them straight up what it is. Yep. Because that's the only control you have. Literally, our government, I mean, most of the people in power are all fucking pedophile. The majority of them are. And if they're not themselves, they know someone who is. And they're not willing to put them out there because it's just too much power and money involved. 
can I can I just say I'm gonna personally message you after this because I've been ripped off of social media for talking about that for the last. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, let's change the subject before they censor me yeah, yet but, again. <laughs> that's, so that's so sad. That's where you can rip them all apart because I've been taken. I've been taken down a hundred times. I don't care. We'll do that on the side. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> that's so sad. Um, you know. I know about this. That's it. That's a very big fight, even bigger than the fight that you have uh, coming up, Helen. And I mean, the the upcoming fight, the motivations behind it, what are they? Because everyone is dying to see this upcoming fight that you got going on September 28th, uh, especially after the Ultimate Fighter against Polina uh, Bethello. What, what, are, what is your drive behind this? Because she's a good fighter. You know, I told uh, yeah. uh, China Knapp, I said, you know, I'm a free agent. I want to come back. I, you know, I will fight anybody you give me, but I would prefer if it's someone that's really good. Like, I'd like to put myself in tough fights because I feel like, like for example, my fight with Christine, when I'm put in a tough situation, I, it takes to bring the best out of me. And I want to yeah. have a very good fight. So, you know, when uh, this girl, she became a free agent also, she got cut from the UFC, I think it was June this year, so it's very fresh. It's not like an older fighter. And she's trying to get back to the UFC. I'm like, oh, great, I'm trying to get in, so this is great. Well, how about we fight for this? We fight for th this one. I mean, I think it's going to be a really good fight. I'm trying to – I hope it goes at least 10 minutes because I, I need some content from my page since I don't show my tits on every picture. So I need, like, <laughs> pictures from me fighting. So I'm going to try to make it 10 minutes, but if I see an opening, you know, before that, or she feels really strong, then I'm going to try to get out of there because, you know, you should not be playing with your food. I, I know I've done that a lot in the past because I just enjoy so much being in there. You know, I, when I'm in there, I feel like I'm myself. And then every time I'm not in the ring, I feel like I'm trying to pretend to be somebody else. So sometimes my fights go to decision because I'm having so much fun, but I'm not going to do that this time. The max amount of time I want to be there is 10 minutes. Somebody's getting knocked out. I'm, I'm going to do my best to make sure it's not me. But, <laughs> but that's what I'm going for. That's what that's the kind of fights I like to watch. And I, and I want to make sure my fans are having fun. And everybody that tunes in has a reason to tune in again when they see that I'm fighting. Oh, uh, we always do. Trust us. We always do. You're a bigger star than you know, like I keep saying. I, I can't wait for you to realize it. And when that moment comes. It's more like when everyone else realizes it. We already know what she is. Oh man, I I just can't I I, I can't even re, I can't even like bring you guys to understand the world that we're in right now to be able to see Invicta FC where it's at, how far it's come is just absolutely amazing. I mean, Helen, you started at 29 years old. Uh to to see how far it's come ha has been an amazing journey. Uh we've we've been on this journey with you and it's been absolutely non-stop and this is not even a quarter of the way with you ultimate fighter was not even anything like you said so we can't wait to see what goes on this upcoming event september 28th uh do, do you know if tickets are still available if there's promo codes uh where, where people can tune in uh, buy tickets uh, the tickets are all because I think it's stadium style, so they're all general admission. So you have a very good view no matter where you're sitting. And as far as watching, it's going to be broadcast live, free on Facebook, YouTube, YouTube. I think Bloody Elbow, XFC. They what they really want. I think Shannon did an amazing job. I mean, the entire car is amazing. Actually, two of other girls from the Ultimate Fire are going to be there. My teammate Hannah Guy is fighting Caitlin Neal from Team Nunes. Uh, also. So, and I mean, Shannon, it was great. And then my fight with Pollyanna is freaking amazing. It's a great matchup. She's an amazing striker. I am going to make her not, I'm going to turn her into a wrestler. You know, like it's going to be a great fight. Aye. But they're also, like the whole car is amazing. And it's on a Wednesday where there's no other, nothing else going on as far as a combat sport. So there's like no reason to not tune in. I think it was a perfect, she picked the perfect date. She picked the perfect fights. And there's so many exciting fights. And the fact that you can watch it free, you don't have to download any app. It's their way of getting their name out there and also to give the fighters a bigger platform. Because yeah. no matter who you are or where you are, you can log you can log you can don't even have to log into YouTube to watch it. You can just find Invicta fighting championship on YouTube and that's it. You get bada the live boom, stream. Bada boom, as the Italians say. <laughs> Well, Helen, uh, always appreciate the time. Always appreciate the insights. Uh, you know, you know, MMA stuff and, and everything in, in between. 
You know how I typically do this, kind of throw the proverbial microphone over, over to you, anyone you'd like to thank, trainer partners, teammates, shoot out your social media sites, any sponsors you might have. The floor is yours, my friend. Um, well, I would like to thank everyone who had anything to do with me being here today. Uh, not just sponsors. I mean, of course, you need sponsors to help you to help me pay for some of the costs of Ninja training. I, I could still use some more sponsors if you're interested. But I just want to thank everybody that is, they look at my fire, my upcoming fire, my content, and they're rooting for me. You know, I am really big on energy, and I feel like there's a lot of good positive energy uh, behind me. Uh, my training partners have been amazing. I mean. Uh, yeah, I have so many scratches and I'm all beat up, but they're really preparing me for this fight. My coaches have been great. Uh, we have really good chemistry going on. The fans have been amazing. You know, I, I didn't realize how little haters I have on my page until I started looking at other people's pages. Like, my page is awesome. Like, I have five followers, but the five of them are awesome. <laughs> so I know, I know where I'm at. And, and of course, thank you guys for giving me, uh, you know, the opportunity to put my ideas out there and, you know, to let people know, you know, who Helen Peralta is because based on what you see me in the ring, when I'm in the ring, that's different. I'm there just to, it's like an, a spiritual experience. I know I look like this. I look mean, but I'm nice. It's just, to me, it's like, it's just a perfect moment. You know, so it's being finally, it's the only place where it's real now. Everything is so, uh, you know, all so many alternative fact and, you know, yeah. may believe, uh, you know, realities that when I'm in the cage, it's the only place that feels real to me because you cannot lie when you're in there. You can lie your way to a fight like Taylor did. <laughs> you know, you can lie all the way until they close the cage. But when you're in there, it's real time, you know, and that's why I enjoy it so much. And and I appreciate everybody that's given me the opportunity to be there. On the other hand, um, I need more than five followers because I need to be popular. And it's, yeah, because <laughs> that's how you get paid. Apparently, you can't just know how to fight. Knowing how to fight is secondary. You need to be popular. So, you know, follow my page, like my post, reshare, whatever it is. That, I don't know how that works. Whatever it is that you need to do to make me popular, just if you can help out doing that, please do so. And uh, thank you. Uh, always oh. a pleasure, Helen. Best best of skill uh, the uh, best. in the fight for you. For you. Definitely. Have hey, oh, 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 oh. We, 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 we really need to figure out who the hula hoop champ is. So let's get the <laughs> videos uploaded, all right? <laughs> got to figure this out. It's going to be me. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna win. Thank I just, so I much. just know it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right Helen, you, Helen. Appreciate the time as always. Be best of skill. We'll, we'll, we'll do this again in the future. Yeah. Thank you, guys. And nice to meet you, Carrie. Oh, it's nice to meet you. I will be following you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> good night, All right, guys. Later, champ. All right. Good night, everyone. That was that was he oh, Helen, yeah. the problem Peralta. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> The, oh, at, Helen yeah, adding to the problem always, Peralta. We, we always uh, bring out some interesting <laughs> stuff out of Adam. Steve, out of where did, how did you come? That was such a good one to come up with. What? Helen the adding she to the came problem. up with it. I just ran with it. <laughs> adding right. to the problem Peralta. I keep moving these screens around as if like we're going to get better looking, but like Carrie, you're no, the only one that, that does it here. Where am I? You're the only one that does it. But so. uh, yeah, man, that, that that was a fun one. Bobo oh Aban and Hel Helen Peralta, definitely. You know, looking forward to both of their fights. Make sure you're you're, you're checking them out. B he's he's going to be do, doing BK BKFC the first of of October. Uh, as as uh, Helen lets you know, she's going to be fighting next week. Steve. Yeah. Um, I think it's time for uh, one of our next segments here. Yeah. Uh, and I believe that's week. called Tweets of the Week. Here we go. Twitter, so social media, uh, uh, websites, and found a handful of things that would you know might find a, a bit interesting. Some of it might might have been satire. Some of it, some of it might 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 have just been you know uh, you know per person A saying something, fighter B saying something. There were some pretty funny ones. Uh, you know, uh, which, I sent Eddie a bunch of them. We'll we'll see what what he comes up with. <laughs> which one should we start with here? Let's start with let's see. Ray Borg, it's been yeah, two Ray years Borg, since being cut from the UFC. I've gone through a lot in that time frame and have reinvented myself as a man. 
three straight wins, no hiccups or fuck ups. And two of my three fights were fight of the night bangers at Dana White, Sean Shelby, and Mick Maynard. I want my job back. Guys, thoughts on this? You want to see Ray Bork back in the UFC, Kerry? Listen, yes. I'm de- I mean, listen, I had I have yeah. no problem <laughs> with, with him getting back in there. I think I think he he should, he should get another crack. Um Hi. let me ask you guys this. Let me make this very simple for everybody. The general discussion, Steve. Steve and Carrie, let's start with Steve. What should qualify a fighter to be able to return to the UFC like an Andre or Law? Yeah, being exciting, like like you know, learning from from what 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 got what got you, you know, multiple losses or or whatever saw you saw you leave the promotion, like improvement, you know, being yeah. a different fighter. Not just not just the racking wins up, but what what does that mean? I I can find find three three Larry Moe and Curleys that I can sit there and say 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 that's three wins in a row. I'm not sitting there saying Ray Borg is is fighting tomato canes, bums, whatever, however you want to call it. But you know, I do think that you know there should be some more a little uniformity to it. Like, nor do I think anyone like like Helen should have to jump through hoops to actually get in. So. I like that. I like that you said that. You shouldn't have to jump through hoops to get in. No, but I also don't, don't think I, I think the, the ultimate fighter contract should die. It should have died. Oh, don't get me started on I like that you brought that up. I really like and, that you and you know, and, and then speaking of that, I think you should go right to uh you know uh something that we're you know unfortunately don't get to go at in death, but you know been a real crazy week for combat sports you know not just with the everything changing with uh with uh, uh things i well, no, we're gonna go to uh, adrian yeah yes is that where we're going or are you trying to bring up the, the one now Ooh, i'm trying to see which one you yeah, want to go yeah. with Harry wanted, to keep, wanted to personally call that KSI, so i don't know about that yeah, I don't, I don't know about that either for KSI thing with Mike Perry. Let, let, let KSI be all intertwined with Jake Paul and all them guys. Jerry, do you know who KSI is? No. Oh, see, wow. Steve, I'm surprised see, you don't Steve, know who KSI is. Okay. So would that, would that be re- like really the fight to make, like KSI? Like, guys, I want to know how many of you guys out there know who KSI is because ultimately, like, I, I don't really know who he is besides being a YouTuber who fought – uh, Jake or Logan or you know what I mean? Like Carrie, I'm on the same boat as you. I'm like, um, I don't know. I'm sorry, I don't pay his attention. But I, I mean, I think the I biggest only know news who, like, the, the, was Elias, right? Olar from a couple of from uh, Elias for sure, for sure, for sure. Uh, Mike oh, Bond okay. tweets. Uh, Carrie, do you want to read this one here? Uh, tweeted from I'm Mike upset Bond about that. Um. Just, oh, I can barely see yeah, it. Mike Bone. Here, I'll read it. I'll read it, guys. Yeah, he just uh, the lights as a thread rose uh, public view and outside of Toronto. Very emotional yeah. scene. As you expect with you know family friends, uh, you know, pay, paying their respect. Uh, it was an open casket. You know, that, no. that's just a hard one, man. Like, like the no. biggest thing about that the kid's 34 years old. Uh no, no, no one knew uh, you know, he 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 was uh he was dealing with uh with, with colon cancer and it just when you go back and look at things now it just it's, it's not surprising at all that he that that he was going through this considering what he was champion uh you know what what saw his exit uh you know from the ufc thing things of that nature it really kind of all makes sense in a way now yeah. like like this this is why that you know this this great looking guy who you know could obviously you know be fighting other fights elsewhere to you know push back and sit there and, and, and run himself out of the UFC. Why would he why would he do that? Why would he be why would he champion marijuana to, to, to the point that yeah. the fact that, that you're able to see uh guys like Nate Diaz just walking around sm- smoking hells uh, you yeah, know d- doing right? things like that that now because he's he was so instrumental in in getting the therapeutic use exemption in uh inside of USADA for for the for the fighters that, that that are in the UFC for for everyone for for that matter it's something that should have been done a long time ago you know and he got the ball rolling a lot of ways in in, in, in things with athletes athlete wise which I thought helped a lot of things happen federally wise to start opening things up for a lot of things I mean dude we're we're at a point in time where Mike Tyson has a strain of weed. Ke- yes. You know, a uh, uh, former wrestler Kevin Nash yeah. is selling weed now. You have oh. Jim Belushi selling weed. This guy's doing it. Like, 
Like it's so much changed in the sense of the time that he started making this stand to do what he did. It's crazy. Can I mention yeah. something really quick that will relate to Carrie? Yes. Um. So I obviously we've all we've all know Elias very well. I've uh, been blessed uh, having Elias on for a couple of interviews on, on on my show, and I'll just play this really quick. Oh, never mind on that. But he came on my show. And he discussed opiates. He discussed marijuana use. And that was huge to me. Uh, obviously, I talk a lot about it. Uh, a lot of these fighters, they go backstage and they get prescribed immediately opiates. And they don't realize what they're getting themselves into. And it's very scary for me to look at. Uh, there, there's so many stories behind this. But a lot of people aren't aware of the real Freddy Krueger nightmare that's behind it. And Elias really actually fought for that and he was a fighter for fighters i want you guys to hear what i'm saying he was a fighter for fighters and fought to the death for that and actually put up a gofundme for people struggling with what he actually grew up with he had a uh he was struggling his whole life suffering from a disease uh we'll share the uh gofundme down below uh, Carrie, I want you to share with everybody because I know you've been through surgery and stuff and uh, we know how uh, gun ho you are and I am uh, and a, lo a lot of people Steve, a, a lot of people are for Elias' movement um, how brave was he to do that that was so brave, a lot of fighters wouldn't have done that because they were risking a lot more yeah than uh, incredible. it's incredible that he was um so outspoken about it and you know people don't realize how many uh fighters and people in general's lives have been affected by opiates and um well because you know a plant had a you know teeny little stigma on it for so long um i mean you could go down a laundry list of fighters right now um ken uh, shamrock Ken Shamrock, you could go into uh, why, why am I drawing a blank? Ultimate Fighter season one, Chris Levin. You got him. You got fucking. Um, oh, why am I drawing Funny. a blank on his name? He fought Brock Lesnar. He brought, uh, got him in the ankle lock. Frank Mir. Frank Mir nearly lost his uh, relationship after he got in a car accident. And, By the way, uh, I, I would love to have his daughter on the show soon. Steve. You know, yeah, yeah right. Frank and that been affected by addiction and people in general. Um, and the stigma about weed that, you know, one, it's not a performance enhancing drug. I Lesser train, of two evils, right? Uh, yeah, I, tra I train mixed martial arts now. It's not a performance enhancing drug um, at all. And uh, I also, you know, play competitive pool and it doesn't do anything for either of my uh, skill sets. What it will do is make me look at something from a different vantage point um, than I ever would because uh, it makes my brain focus. Oddly enough, um, where nothing else really did. You know, they prescribed me at one point the Adderall. That did not focus my brain. I felt like I took a fucking bag of cocaine straight to the face. Terrible stuff. Um, and, you know, Xanax and everything else like that made me feel like a zombie. Clodopin puts me to sleep. So I'm like, I don't want to, you know, do all that. And, you know, I can take an edible and roll and, you know, go in. I, I actually train high every time i do i'm never never don't smoke before i go in and train uh, <laughs> i was sticking actually up the day you met me you came over and you were like hi my name's carrie nice to meet you what's your <laughs> name here's an edible you gave me an edible <laughs> uh, matter of fact i'm That's like the best hostess like on the road i'm like what's up guys i got stuff for you full Come circle on. from the intro of the show till now wow, wow that's crazy it's it's true you know and it's really um it's it's just so nice that the stigma's not there anymore. Um, you know, I used to have people yell at me. They're like, "You're gonna go on camera and smoke pot." I'm like, "I don't give a fuck. I, I'm I'm sorry. I just don't see why it oh, should be yeah, a problem. Right, right. For me, this me. this better's my life. It, and yeah. and why is that bad? It's the only thing that never took me to a place where I was trying to hurt myself, anybody else, crashing my car, losing my job. Never lost a job over pot. Sorry. <sighs> 
I've lost plenty of jobs to opiates. So yeah, Elias will definitely be missed yeah. uh, for sure. He has a lot of accomplishments. Steve, uh, why don't you remind everyone uh, who who Elias was, what he's accomplished. I mean, obviously the ultimate fighter. Yeah, yeah, one of one uh, of the uh, one of the the first Canadians, uh, you know, to, to to win the Ultimate Fighter, um, uh, Doobie's achievement, if if you want to call it that, the first uh, Invicta Ring Boy. Yes, thank you for <laughs> you know, bringing he's that been up. On the, he's been on the the cover of plenty of uh, nine. Models. The the guy was a model. I mean, he like, always reminded me nine, Steve. Nine, he <laughs> said. <laughs> in my phone if i look it up i have one of the covers i still have his, his number Man. uh i have yeah. uh one of the covers it's him <laughs> dude guys look up some of the covers with elias they're epic and to think you could <laughs> buy a book and you think the main character is elias because you look at the cover and it's elias and then you read through that book. like i, I kind of want to get into that and see what uh, those books are about thinking it's Elias. Like that, that's just kind of cool. Maybe I'll do a book review, guys. Uh, thumbs up. Uh, if this video gets uh, 30 thumbs up, I'll do a book review. That's <laughs> 30 thumbs up. I'll do book <laughs> review. For um, you know what? I'll do it anyways. I'll do it anyways. It reminds it. Me. Come on, man. We got the last few tweets we got to get to. We still have like a couple more things we've got to wrap. There we I go. know. I know. So this one, obviously. Um, so th this narrative that like. Um, the boxers have been basically running from Jake Paul and that the MMA fighters are have bigger balls. They want to step in there with Jake and things of that nature. No, not really. They, the, the MMA fighters have been grossly, grossly underpaid for the better yep. part of the entire sports Ever. existence, and they want to get their money. So... <laughs> I And, and has, has seen... Really, I, I don't know where he's even even saying anything because a uh, uh, memory serves me. Aren't you fighting an, an old MMA fighter, Vitor Belfort? Thank you very much. All right, going on to the <laughs> next one. I mean, here. like, 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 can we stop? And then, like, yeah, all right. So, Dana White preview, previews the new UFC 279 yeah, card nice and announces the, the co main cold. event will be five rounds. The card just Became the worst card ever. Like, like, listen, that has to be without a doubt a troll job. Without a doubt. <laughs> I mean, come on. Some of these comments are absolutely insane. Even yeah, Helen man. was saying it. The next yeah. one. Comments. The comments. Let me tell you something. Without getting crazy <laughs> or anything like that, you want to go through a comment section? Go on hashtag Irish Twitter. And check out their special cousin on there, because uh, we have a lot of <laughs> a lot of good friends. That sounds like a rabbit hole in their countries. That like the the amount of roasting that went on uh, about the passing of uh, the monarch. I'm not going to go too. Oh, far. I saw a lot of that. That was insane. Yo, it was the best oh. day ever. It was like it was St. Patty's Day on Irish Twitter. Those people were celebrating it. I couldn't Our, believe. I mean, not for nothing, when you talk to people from other countries, the I come. Her and why they I, I gotta her. say is Betty White li lived longer, so she Fuck she's you, America. <laughs> I don't know. I get the meme culture, but like to me, that was just like so I don't know. <laughs> Listen, obviously comedy to... comes with uh you you gotta be upset. Nothing's off to table, laugh. nothing is off the table anymore, Eddie. And yeah, I get that. The things that people are like literally uh, you got what's that guy, uh, Kim Kardashian's whatever that talks Pete about Davidson. He talks about pedophilia and jokes around about it. That's Pete not a Davidson. fucking joke. I'll yeah. talk shit about that pedophile breeding bitch, the queen. Sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Devoted. I love it. Her husband. And All right. Well, I welcome to the raps. No, no, there was no, no, more. no. What was this more. one, Steve? Those guys just suck. And GSP. Yeah, has basically the, the, the record. The, the comment was basically insinuating that that GSP's reign was just was inflated, and that he didn't really beat anybody, and that if he was if he were to be going against against today's Walter Waste, that he wouldn't even crack the top ten. Was more or less what he was saying. Who said that? The the commenter, it, like like I said, what, I told the, I told Eddie that there's no way that this guy. It's so stupid. Okay. This is a new segment for every week. So, guys, if you have any 
any tweets that you want to see on the next episode of Combat Deviants, make sure to follow us on Twitter at Combat no, well, where's the one? Where's the one that 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 that, that TJ saving the card? Where's that one? There you go. There you go. My underwear look, looking at me buying. buying <laughs> <laughs> Trash paper you saved by T, TJ Dillashaw. Thankfully, yeah. really, because that's the only reason we're we tuning yeah. in into that pay per view. My funny. underwear looking at me buying. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a good tweet. That's a good that's tweet. A great <laughs> one. Um, guys, obviously, we got the upcoming card for UFC. We're going to be. Uh, covering it on our Twitter page, and we're going to be recapping it on next week's episode of Combat Deviant. Steve, I don't know if you want to give anything away or too much. Yeah, no, anything. we're not. Do- well, we're getting close to to it. Like uh, like I said, we're at. I think we're at two. No, no two. We're at six seventy for followers on Twitter. So when we hit a, thing, oh, we were at six 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 just at the yeah, beginning of the show. Yeah, well. We, well People have been following. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> but but that means so, one thing: when we, we're doing we giveaway. We're, we're gonna do we're, we're gonna do a give, giveaway for 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 Twitter when the belly up uh, 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 YouTube hits hits one k. We're gonna do a giveaway when our when our YouTube hits five hundred. We'll, we'll do a Carrie giveaway. and Helen will do a hula hoop face off. <laughs> all of us will who face off that. Right. I used to be able to. No, man. I mean, I got, I got some, uh, I got some old school sign posters over here. Some guys, some guys, some, some of y'all might enjoy. Yeah. You know, Ed, Eddie, Eddie was already showing. He's got, got he's gonna, he's gonna break down and get, get, give, get, give away a signed Emmett Smith card. I got, I got, so I, got I got some other stuff from uh, my, uh, my midwaist. Midwest break guys, they they broke me down with a bu- bu- bunch of uh, you know, UFC cards. So we'll, we'll, we'll think, think about some stuff. I, you know, I got some I got some football stuff for the football season. We're gonna we're we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna do, get some more stuff on. And for people who didn't notice, who didn't pay attention to the timeline, was uh was 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 going back and forth with with with, with Sean Merriman. We will get him on at some point in time before his next. Of, uh, lights out MMA event that should be fun. All right, and awesome. We, we, and the we, podcast we got, we, for we everybody some, wondering, you know, we, we got another another BKFC heavyweight. You know, we got a we got a world champion, former world champion boxer joining us. We'll, we'll you guys are here a little bit more oh, about that. Wait, but like man. I said, dude, follow, like, subscribe, bellyupsports.com, bellyupsports. Make sure you, you're showing some love. You know, both of you guys missed the, the, the meeting last night, oh. so you didn't hear some some of the stuff that's been going on. I'll tell you guys. Bellybuttonrubbing.com. You're going to absolutely love what the guys at Belly Up Stores just, just announced for everyone out there. We'll, they'll probably make the announcement going out publicly within the next few weeks, but it's going to be Ooh. it's going to be fun. More, more content, uh, more female content coming out oh. from the Belly Up side of, side of things, so. Guys, make sure you're following the website. Make sure you're following on social. You know, Belly Up Media, Belly Up Sports, Belly Up Fantasy. It, 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 the family's growing. They got a lot of stuff going on. We're we're well over our time tonight. Belly Button uh, Bobo will be. We're gonna have some more fun. Carrie will be here. Eddie will be here. Whoever else is gonna be gonna be hopping on with with, with us crazy ass deviants. Enjoy. Have fun. Appreciate the support from everyone. We'll be back, same time, same channel. And guys, make sure to follow us. Carrie, um, thank you for joining us on this episode. Steve, I can't wait for next week. And that wraps it up for episode three. For anybody really quick that's interested in the audio podcast, make sure to follow us on Twitter at Combat Deviants, and it will be up shortly for episode three. Thank you, guys, and God bless. See ya. (laughs) 